Ik kreeg kwad. Jesus, that board's miles away from me. I can't, I can't, I can't you're gonna have to read them cards out. <laughs> Nice set of runner. Pass on for me. moment we are experiencing some technical difficulties we can't currently see the hands of the players this is something we're going to hopefully get sorted really quick otherwise we're going to be guessing the rest of the night Simon. Yeah I thought they were streaming at 7.30 so I didn't think it was going to happen. What time is it? Oh I watched that hand before. Oh Jane you won't be able to watch that one. 
<laughs> we'll never know. I'll check in the dark. Check. <laughs> the good news here is you now qualify for a t-shirt for what I've been tapped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so easy. It's so massive there. I'm a little bloody speech fight there. <laughs> good evening, everybody, and welcome to DTD Live for the Cash Game Series, Episode 1. You are joined here by myself, Charlie Reed, and Simon Trumper. Today we're going to be covering a 5-10 with an optional 25 straddle. And the atmosphere in Dustal Dawn, as usual, is amazing. But the Cash Game Festival week, even better. Simon, we could be in for a fun one tonight. Yeah, I think you're right there, Charlie. This is, uh, they're playing sack deep in this, in this game with uh, stacks from 3K up to 5K. So three to 500 big blinds. Hopefully we're going to see some big pots tonight. Yeah, really nice to be in Dust Till Dawn, and today's lineup we could be in for a spicy game. Really looking forward to it. And if you're not already in Nottingham this week, the question is why? It is cash game week at Dust Till Dawn. We've got hourly cash prizes to give away every two hours, sorry. Every hour, tickets will be distributed to the players for Sunday's raffle. And there will be 10,000 jackpot raffle given away on Sunday. Two prizes of 2,500 and five 1Ks. So, if you're not already in Nottingham, this is the weekend to be in Dust Till Dawn. And already we've got some, some action going on here. Ace 3 off and 5 4 off. Batting it out in a £400 pot. And aggression is the best way as Mark is going to take down this pot. Oh, it spoke too soon. Frisky from Kevin from seat eight. You're in front. Oh, go on, Kev. Get one in early. Go on, Kev announced. He's got none in Mark's book now, Kev. That pot he's Kevin's like showing a uh, small profit he started with. Yeah, yeah, he can't have 5.4, he's stuck with 3k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he must Kevin. have increased his stack because uh, he's, he's got two flaks there and 20 pinks. Uh, he's obviously uh, started with 5k in the end. 
So there we've got the flat in play. We've got pinks are 100s, yeah. the black chips 25, and the reds are fives. Kevin, you can see in your picture there, he's in seat seven. Next to him is John Wetton. And then in five is Mark Earl. Four is Taffy. Three is Gary Spinks in your picture there with the white hoodie. And on the left is Ian Gascoigne. And on Ian's left is seat one, John Licton. Thank you. Two hands being dealt out here, Charlie. King Queen, King Eight, King Ten, Ace Nine, Ace Six. Yeah, everyone's pretty deep here, so nobody's decided to take the three bet routes. We're taking the passive route, and there's five players to the flop. And we could be seeing some action as Gary has flopped enough flush draw. Flop checks around. Pair with enough flush draw now. Check. 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 And now Gary's surely going to come in for a bet. Such a strong hand on this board. Kevin on call for his gut shot. Kevin and Ian need each other's cards to complete the strike. Got to be going three way to the river card. 830 in the middle. Oh, and he's hit the flush. No help for the others. And Kevin deciding to turn the king high into a bluff with the king of hearts in hand. However, this is not good timing and he will be getting the bad news coming from Gary shortly. What size does Gary elect to go? And Spinks, he just clicks it back to a thousand, and surely now this will be the, the end of this one. Spinks says he had the nine on the turn and the nuts on the river, and you can't get much more honest than that, Simon. No? So great to be back in one of the UK's biggest and best card rooms in Dust Till Dawn. Tonight, 5-10, with the Ops 25 travel, action-packed game. Atmosphere around the room is perfect. It is cash game week here at Dust Till Dawn. Excellent to be back, Simon. Yeah, there's a lot going on at Dust Till Dawn over the next few weeks. Um, we've got the UK PC series at the end of April, 26th of April to the 1st of May. 285 with a 100k guarantee at the end of may we've got the wpc 500 running the 24th to the 29th of may 560 pound buying with a 500k guarantee and at the beginning of may over the coronation weekend 38th of may we've got a dt100 um with 20 seats being added to the prize pool for the wpc 500 so there's lots going on Oh, look at that. Ian's got pocket rockets. Oh, everybody's folded. So as you can see, we are playing some very deep stacks in the 5-10 game today. Could be some really big pots to see later on. Looks like it's a friendly table. Everybody's talking to each other. 
And this is the this is the real joys of, of, of live poker. A very special welcome to all people joining us for episode one of the Cash Game series here at Dust Till Dawn. So we go for uh, under the gun open from Andrew with the ace jack suited for 60. Kevin decides to come along with the 10 9 off from the button. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of both players here. Kevin with a gut shot queen for a straight. Andrew with the. Uh, Little pair with the top kicker. So Kevin's gone from the, for the aggressive route, and interesting to note, uh, eight also work as well. And there we go, it's a straight for Kevin. In on the turn. Seven hundred and eighty-five in the middle. Kevin elects for the 70% pot size, and Andrew is still in disbelief. Now, this is going to be a just call, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, I don't believe you, I'm going to call. Yeah, so Kevin now with the decision, can he raise and get caught by a worse hand or does he just take his showdown and hope that hope that Andrew doesn't have a full house? And scoops in the 1.3k pot with a straight. Nice hand, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I missed that, double belly buster. Yeah, didn't see the eight. <laughs> so Kevin's now up to 6k, started with 5k, Mark's on 5.1, same as Gary, Ian on 4.2, John on 3.8. Yeah, so interesting to note that this is episode one of the Cash Game series at Dust Till Dawn. And we've been informed today by the club we have some new seats to arrive. Uh, work in progress, everything's improving. By the day here at Dust Till Dawn, the table's been in use since WSOP. And yeah, it really is special to be in one of the UK's biggest and best card rooms again. Just waiting for the graphics to catch up at the moment, see what everybody's getting involved with. There you see Mark's got ace check suited, Kevin's got ace eight suited. Not flush draw for Kevin. I'm just having some slight technical difficulties with the graphics here. I'm sure we'll get them sorted very quickly. There's your flop, 10 high flop. Ian's raised it with his King 10 suited. So two players left to the turn. Kevin now picks up a pair with his nut flush draw. Ian's still in front with his King 10.
He's gone check, check. Oh, and he's made the flush. This is the second heart flush, nut flush we've seen. Spinksy had it against Kevin earlier, and now Kevin's got it himself. So now Kevin just needs to decide what size to choose to be greedy, target some sets, some two pairs, maybe even some flushes, or do we need to lean towards the 10x of Ian's range? Ops for the half pot sizing. Now Ian with the King 10, we're bluff catching. It's whether he believes Kevin or not. If Ian does make the call, it will be a 3.7K pot going towards wow. Kevin, and he does call it off. And Kevin will scoop with the nuts. That's the biggest pot of the night so far. Yeah, Ian just saying, why did he give him a free card on the turn? And just in case the game wasn't juicy enough for the viewers, we are now playing at 800 big blind stack. Get the straddle on, boys. So, if anyone's got any questions or just feels like saying hello, yeah, yeah, yeah. come in the chat box. We've got some messages already. James Ablett, graphics looking good. I like it. Thanks very much. And at least you've got a nice sofa to sleep on tonight. That'll be for me. Thanks very much, James. <laughs> <laughs> me and James recently just spent six weeks together in Vegas. Out again in June. But more importantly, there's so much action going on in Dustal Dawn this week. And from under the gun, we've got some 5 4 suited action. I just heard a bottle of water, Simon. A bottle of water? Hmm. Get the Jaeger bombs out. Right, so I believe the straddle was on this hand as the raise was 115. Both players flopping gut shots. If John does connect with his good shot, he's going to have the bad end of a straight. However, he will like this card. That's already up to £610. John just recognising he's going to have 12 outs here a lot of the time. Any spade, any six. Byron again, but Andrew's still in disbelief. And look at that, he makes the straight on the river. Comes straight out for a bet. Yeah. It's very hard to play against him. Now, unless John's got any funny ideas, I'm expecting Andrew to take down this 1.6k pot again. We've got knowledge in the chat. Charlie Amina, welcome to the stream, sir. Yeah, hey, you suck. Yeah. 
and taking a considerable amount of time now. John, just what's happened here? What did he pull? No, no, he's, he's announced all in and, and oh, used the one right. chip. And now Andrew, he only loses to one hand in Queen Jack. Surely he's going to flick it in. How much is the jam for? I can't see Jack is holding here. saying what the bloody hell were you doing there Dad? you know i mean that's like text going off in 30 minutes i'm gonna get a, oh, the only hand that he's represented here is jack green of diamonds or jack green of spades <laughs> very true two combos of queen jack some hands we're gonna chop with and the all-in is 2k for 1.3k we're just never folding and straight away Receiving the bad news is John. John started with 3k, he's felt it, so let's see if he's coming back. What's this against that? There's some night call in stations. You've got a hand. I just think that's So, Mike Leonard says here for Berridge versus Ian. Uh, sadly, Berridge dropped out from this game, so he's not going to be featuring in tonight's cash game. But we still have plenty more ac of more action to cover here in the 5, 10, 25 at dusk. Yes, Mike Spinks is here, there and everywhere. He's had some excellent results in the last 12 months across all sorts of different circuits. And Spinks really is one of poker's true gentlemen. Real nice guy. Wishing Gary Spinks the best of luck for the rest of the session. So Spinksy coming in with the 75 raise with the ace queen suited. Andrew's having none of it, wants to come along with the 10-6. We go heads to the flop, nice and clean for Spinksy, flopping top pair. And unfortunately for him, no action on this one. So, back in dust till dawn, really is amazing. For those of you just joining us now, we have mentioned we've got the UK PC series, May Bank Holiday Weekend, the 26th to the 1st of May. £280 buy-in, 100k guarantee main event. Some tasty value in that one. And then at the end of May, the 25th to the 29th, we've got the 500k guarantee, £560 buy-in main. Half a million for £560. There'll also be 200k guaranteed high rollers. And there's also plenty of live satellites to qualify into those events. Ian coming in with the raise from the hijack. A call from Spinks. And 
a large three bet size from Mark in the small blind. Ian choosing to make the call in position. Both players flopping nothing, a back door, straight draw and flush draw for Ian. Depending on Mark's sizing will determine whether he will continue for one more card. And no, I just I just don't think there's enough going on here for Ian. However, he's reaching for chips and he wants to see another card. Now with the SBR of less than one, Ian really does need a miracle to continue any further in his hand and that could be one of them. No flush draw for Ian now. Will we just see Mark move all in with the ace-king? Bets over half of Ian's remaining stack. Now we've called the three bet pre-flop, we've called the flop with a whole host of nothing, and now we improve to the no flush draw. Something's telling me we may be seeing a river card here, and Ian decides to move in the lot. And for 665, Simon, yeah. Mark's going to have to just flick it in and, and, and then flip against the ace-8. Yeah, he's getting nearly 7 to 1. Cool. We see. are going to see a river card. Needing a red card or an eight. And it's an offsuit, Jack. That's another big pot, Charlie. 4.9k. Yeah, so with. Ten hands in already. We've seen two players stacked. Action is plentiful here at Dust Till Dawn Casino Nottingham. It's a place today. So for cash game week, I believe the stakes being offered here at Dust Till Dawn are one, two, two, five, and also higher stakes uh, on demand. Definitely a week to be at Dust Till Dawn. Free money, 15,000 in cash prizes to give away. Tickets given out every hour towards Sunday's raffle draw. And there's going to be two prizes of 2,500 cash and five pri prizes of 1,000. We've lost Ian and John. You can hear Ian talking about the hand. He's, he's still mic'd up. Here we go, this is a loose one. 10-8 from under the gun. Spicy. And John defending the big blind with 8-9 off. Gonna be in a dominated position. Andrew asks John, how much are you playing? All right, Spinksy woke up with the Ace King. <laughs> we missed that one. Of 
Devin out in front with 8k, Mark not far behind 7.5k, Andrew with 5.3, Gary with 5.2 and John with 3.8. I think Ian's brought back in for another 4k. Queen Jack off from under the gun this time. Mark completing in the cutoff with the fours. Ace eight's good for Kevin. And a good size three bet from John in the small blind with the ace queen suited. Andrew's decided that he's not finished with his queen jack and Mark's come along with the fours. A queen high flop could be dangerous for Andrew. This is one I'd have liked to have seen him fold. Facing the three bet. Could be in a dominated position exactly like he is. Three way for a 1.2k pot. Mark still with the best hand here. I expect he'll be calling at least once on this flop. John C bets 4.75 into 1.2k. Really nothing there for Andy this time. And that's the one card that Mark didn't want to see on the turn. So John now picking up showdown, decides to slow, to slow down. Mark does have some 10x in his range. We definitely has to be careful. Can't go for two further streets. And this one could just go check, check. Now, I'm not too sure what Mark could be calling John's bet with here. Does lead in for a 4.75 bet, though, and this, this should be that. Can't see Mark paying now. Expecting all of John's bluffs, Queen Jack, King Jack, King Queen, to continue on the turn. there Kevin's up 2.9k Mark's 1.7 Gary 1.2 John 1 Sign of the gun, Mark's got ace three suitors, makes it 120. It's going to be checked all the way here. Yeah. 
Yeah, for those wondering when the next stream of a tournament will be, it's going to be the final table of the WPT 500 on the 29th of May. And for past game streams, hopefully it's going to be a weekly thing. This is a work in progress here at Dust Till Dawn, getting the cash games up and running again. New seats have been ordered, new tables are getting used. Everything is just getting started as far as streams going Dust Till Dawn all over again. For those of you just joining us, it is currently cash game week here at Dust Till Dawn. 15,000 in cash prizes to give away. Nottingham is definitely the place to be this weekend. Nice to see the players are putting the 25 on. Ian decides to ISO his ace eight off from the button for 100. And I'm sure Kevin will be continuing. Let's call for the coolest, Simon. Ace eight deuce. Yeah. I was just thinking that Ian lost his big pot with Ace 8. <laughs> In Ace 8 hearts, missed his flush. Ian decided to check back this flop with his hand. Not a great flop for his hand, but a board that he will be continuing on a lot. Having all the strong hands in his range. King Queens, Ace King, Aces. And Deuces leads the turn as enough to, and is enough to get the job done. So well played, sir. Katie Swift has said, Oi, oi, team reading the house, fab choice of commentator. Thanks very much, Katie. It really is a pleasure to be here at Dust Till Dawn, one of the UK's biggest and best casinos. 5, 10, 25, cash game action. It doesn't get much better than this, Simon. It certainly doesn't, Simon, though. I've seen a lot of action already. Uh, it looks like we lost John Wetton. It doesn't seem to have come back. So there's 20 quid still sat there where he, where he was. He might need a little bit more than £20 to get back involved again, though, Simon. Yeah. Now, Katie's asked, will I be playing at all or commentating for the duration of the festival? So, I'm here for tonight to commentate on the 5, 10, 25, and I might jump in some of the 1, 2 action later on. We'll just see. We'll, we'll see. I'm, I, might be, I might be drained by then. We're going to see lots of big pots. Back home for me, back to sunny Liverpool tomorrow. Thanks for joining the stream, Katie. And we could have a little bit of war between John and Andrew here, both flopping double gutters. Potential free roll in there, I've seen the jack of clubs. Check to John twice, does he want to start firing now, trying to take down this pot? Choose to see a river card. And does Ace High get allowed to show down here? <laughs> Looks like it. Mark's Ace Four is going to be best. Once again, a special welcome to all of our viewers here at Dust Till Dawn. We are currently streaming a 5-10 with an optional 25 cash game. Cash game festival week here at Dust Till Dawn. 15,000 in cash game prizes to give away. Poker players, Nottingham is the place to be this week. Already we've had two players lose all of their stack. Wondering what's going to be happening next. Yeah, Kevin, miles out in front here with 8K at the moment. Mark, not far behind, 6.7 in, who's just brought back in for 4K, sitting at the bottom of the tra table. 
Don't forget, we do have lots of other items happening here at Dusseldorf. Coming up, we have the UK PC Series, 26th to the 1st of May. 280 by with 100k guaranteed. We've got the WPC 500 at the end of May, 24th to the 29th, £560 buy-in, 500k guaranteed. And in between, we have, on the 3rd to the 8th of May, we have a DTD 100 with 20 seats into the WPT 500. So lots happening at Dustal Dawn here over the next few weeks. Come down and enjoy the fun. Andrew, top pair open ended here. His name's Andrew Bacon, but everybody knows him as Taffy, but they, <laughs> they didn't put him in as Taffy on the screen. <laughs> and he's made the straight on the turn. Kevin's picked up the flush draw though with the Queen of Diamonds. Two big stacks here. Kevin took quite a while to check on the turn and I think Andrew could be checking this one back as there is a flush there. However, he does decide to bet out the 300 and it's whether Kevin thinks his Queen of Diamonds is live. Fancy in a gamble. Doesn't find one of the remaining diamonds from the path. Checks it. Taffy checks it back this time. And Big Baggy says, looking forward to playing at the casino again in May. Few lads coming down from Newton A Cliff to play the APAC tournaments. Yeah, Dust Till Dawn is, really is a special poker room. One of the biggest and best in the UK. And it's an absolute pleasure to be able to commentate this 5, 10, 25 live stream for you guys. As you can see there, Taffy's been the, the most aggressive player. I haven't really seen much of Gary for the last few hands. Spain, she, Spain, she. And if you're looking for action, there's a little bit for you. Opening the nine deuce from gun. I'm sure Ian might tell us later there was a graphic error and it was actually aces. Taffy manages a fold, 9 3 of spades. Kevin's got a pair of twos again, second time he's had them tonight. Spinksy fancy in his 6 7. Mark flopping best. Gonna continue on this board with the Ace of Diamonds for backup. Uh, 
and Kevin decides to put Mark to the sword with his pocket twos. I'm not I'm not really understanding this raise on the floor from Kevin. No, and Mark's picked up the nut flush draw on the turn. And made the rough has made the flush on the river. I think we might see a crying call from Kevin here. But look, he's induced a raise. This is this is well played from Mark. Kevin's decided to put him to the test, but it's not going to work again. It's, it's tough for Kevin. Once once he raises on the flop, there's not actually many hands that Mark is going to continue the flop with that end up making a high flush. Queen of Diamonds rolling in on the turn. Just just bad timing. But that's what we like to see, some spiciness on the stream. Unlucky for Kevin. Nice bet there from Mark, was it? 85 quid on the river. Yeah. Juice to that 500 bluff. Kevin straight away thinking he's not going to bet 10% pot with any strong hands. Trying to buy a cheap showdown. Decided to put him to the sword, but he had the nuts. Nice bit of play. This time Mark just calls the 25. Kevin calls behind. Both have got spades. Kevin's ISO to 125, I think. And when we call one big blind and the raise is five big blinds, we're not going anywhere. Super deep. So heads up to the flop of Jack 9 3, two hearts. And it looks like Mark's decided to lead this board. Not enough going on for Kevin to continue. Yeah, 7.8k started with 5k, so he's got a nice profit already. <laughs> and haven't seen Kevin play, I'm assuming he's going to be straight in with the Jack 8 suited. Pretty looking hand, 9-10 suited. <laughs> Andrew coming along with fours from the blinds. And Kevin's in as well. So three-way again. 80 in the middle to the flop. We see a flop of a 7-10. So middle pair and a backdoor flush draw for Ian, backdoor straight draw. A good shot for Kevin and not enough for Andrew, so I'm expecting he'll be folding on this flop. Now let's get the nine of spades. Six of diamonds it is on the turn. And Ian not slowing down with his middle pair. That'll do the job. Got it through.
It was a pre-flop razor. He see bet the flop and carried on on the turn. Rob said, one spinks to stack the lot. Impossible to dislike that guy. Very true. Not a bad way to say about Mr. Spinks. Got time for everybody. Always happy on the, on, on the circuit. And what a time he's had over the last, the last 12 months in particular. All rooting for Mr. Spinks. That's decent hand apart. Well, he did have aces, but he yeah. he's got no action. Let's see if he can get action with Queens this time. Gary's got pocket twos. We saw uh, Kevin had twos twice. So Ian coming in for the chunky 125 size. Spinksy's along with the deuces. And we should be heads up, but Kevin's got other ideas. There for Ian. And a fast check for, for, from Ian, and Spinksy fires off for 225. Uh, this is one I'd like to see him just call Simon after being the pre flop raiser and checking the flop here. A check raise would look very, very scary. Supposed to have the strongest hands on this board. Yeah. He does just make the call. Yeah, well timed flat for me, and I like this. Oh, oh wow! The deuce drills it off the turn. This could be trouble for Mr. Spinks. Chooses the 75% pot size, and, and now Ian won't be loving life because there is a whole host of flushes that Spinks he can have at the moment. So I'm not expecting to see anything other than a call. And there's definitely some action rivers in this deck, Simon. So Ian just making a decision now whether to call or raise. And he is electing to get the money in as far as he possibly can. And I don't see, I, I don't see a way that Sphinx is going to fold this hand. Spinks put him on. Well, Spinks will already know he is bluff catching now for the set. No hand that Ian can have for value. Worst and deuces would play this way. So, Gary's got a decision to make. It's time to gamble to try and pair up the board and take the lead, but that won't be good enough because Ian's got a set of queens. Big raise by Ian, raise to 2.7. Gary has turned out 600. Now Gary really puts the sword in such a difficult spot. Would do an excellent job to get out of the way of this. And he does move them all in. And we're going to be running out of river. Any deuces in the deck? <laughs> And no improvement for Spinksy. And we're going to see a huge pot getting scooped towards Ian. Set over set. <coughs> Pretty unlucky there for Mr. Spinks. Unfortunate turn card. So, so difficult to get away from, Simon. Yeah. He bet the flop with, with, with just a pair of twos and makes a set. Changed the whole scenario, and then all the money went in. Yeah, and he's obviously hoping that uh, uh, Ian has maybe got ace-king with the ace of spades. Didn't think his set of twos would beat on the turn. Doesn't put him down on a flush. Yeah, it is rather unfortunate for all of the money to be moved in on the turn card, but Ian with the well-timed raise on the turn. 
Like you said, the flat call on the flop was the winner for him. Yeah, the problem with raising the flop, as he was the, the pre-flop raising, is when he does raise the flop, if Spinksy does even have some of the strong hands like Ace-10 and Ace-Jack, these are now going to be worried because Ian raised pre-flop, he can have Ace-Queen, Ace-King, pocket-Queens, pocket-Aces. Have to proceed with caution when facing raises, so it was a very well-timed flat. Good disguise of the hand for me, and, and really, bad, really bad news for Gary Spinks. So it seems like it seems we've made the mistake there because it looked like Spinksy moved in all of his chips to call. Yet the card is still face down and Spinksy's got a decision to make. So maybe there still is a way out for Gary Spinks. Oh, so Gary did find a way out. Yeah, we 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 seen Spinksy pick up his chips. Yeah. It looked like he was he was he was he was putting them all in, but managed to fold his set, and the queens have been shown. Great fold from Spinksy. Uh, there you see, well, it says Spinksy's still got 2K. Um, he sat down with 4K. So Spinksy now our table short stack with the whole 200 big blinds definitely still in this game. John's not getting many starting hands, is he? See much from him. Gary's picked up a nice hand here. Ace King suited. Second time he's had it tonight. Mixing it up with the limp, I'd have thought this had been a good time to raise. It could look like he was tilting from the previous hand. Even though the flush is there, though, Simon, it's, it's still, still is hard to lay down sets. You've got to respect Spinksy for making that fold. John deciding to ISO the sixes. When this gets brought back around to Gary, I'm assuming that. This pop could become inflated very quickly. <laughs> it looks like John Wetton has rejoined us with the sixes. Sat back down with five. Okay, this time. So Rob said about the previous hand, can Gary jam the turn? Well, the, the, the problem with, with that is, is once he's been raised on the turn, he, he's essentially bluff catching with the deuces, so only usually called by a better hand. Spinksy seems to have played his set of twos pretty well. Finding a way out, set over set. It looks like uh, Spinksy's moved in here. Has Spinksy sent it? A hell of a raise, isn't it? From 110 pounds to 2k. Yeah, the 11 bigs ISO for the then back jam for 200 big blinds. What have you got to say about that, John? Spinks, he definitely wanting the call here with the ace king of clubs, looking to gamble and get his buy-in back. 
and it looks like John has decided to flick in the call and we're going to play a 400 big blind pot here, Sixers versus Ace King. The first all-in pre-flop we've seen so far tonight. And Spinksy will be needing to hit an ace or a king. Yeah, because he's just limped prior to the raise from John, he didn't think that he was that strong. It's a split pot. Oh, no, it's not. John's got a six of hearts. Oh, it plays. unbelievable. Spinksy flop best. <laughs> Spinksy flop best. There were still nine hearts remaining for John. And he manages to find another two of them. Sick. And we could be losing Gary Spinks. We, 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 we had a whole different board. Right, so it's... Oh, we ran twice. Oh, ran twice. Ah, right, we didn't get to see the first board. They ran twice, and Spinks, he loses both of them. He flops best again. He flops best again, and a six on the river. Gary Spinks, your luck is not in today, sir. And look at that. The action is plentiful already here at Dust Till Dawn. Running the board twice. Ace, king of club and sixes. Flopping best twice. Coming last twice. So unlucky for Mr Spinks. And in the, in, in the match with few hands, that just shows you how sick poker can beat Simon. So John Wetton came back at exactly the right time there. We've got a couple of comments from the set over set hand. Rob saying, surely calling is bad though. Flush can get there with combo draws on the river. Not many bricks. And Peter Crawler said he didn't call. He led. Sorry, he bet that, but that way with draws. Well, yeah, I mean, sure. If, if you assume that your opponent is, is, is bluffing with draws, then surely the best play would be to call and to keep those bluffs in. Uh, or you can take the fast route and, and get all the money in and hopefully deny equity from those bluffs. But I'm sure the thought process from Spinksy would have been that he was bluff, ca bluff catching with his deuces and he wants to let his bluffs carry on bluffing. He did manage to find a way out on the river, but in the space of a few hands there, Gary Spinks, so unlucky. Ian's raised with ace six off to 75. Mark's called with ace jack off. Both players flop top pair. One six five in the middle. So Ian raised pre-flop, right? Yeah. Mark just flatted. On the flop, I think Ian can find some checks here with his hand because it's pretty tough to get three streets of value from an ace with just a six. And Mark gonna get some quick value from the worst hand. Mark out in front with 8.2k. So we have an empty seat at the moment. Not sure if Gary is going to reload or we're going to find a new player. I'm sure we'll have info for that on for you soon. I like 
So we've got a large open size here from Mark, 115 and a cut off with A6 suited. And no action this time. Taffy still our most aggressive player, 54% VPIP. Mark with the same result, Kevin just behind on 50%. Yeah, nice to see Simon that so far each player has been somewhat involved. Can't get over that home with Spinksy, ace king suited against sixes, and he, he, he flopped <laughs> on both flops. He's, he's yeah. flopped up here, oh, and he's ended up losing both. Ways. Yeah, that was definitely a sick one. That the, the chat definitely responded to that hand. So unlucky from Gary Spinks, ace king versus sixes for a 400 big blind pot, yeah. running the board twice, flopping best twice, and losing twice. Pretty That's, tough to do. It's a hell of a call from John, isn't it? He's only put 85 quid in. And then he's put in two grand. Must have for, put a, put Spinks on Ace King. Decided to gamble in his early days, and yeah, paid off. Ian with a nice hand here, small flush draw and a pair. Taffy's got a better pair. He's cool with the one two five. We've seen this before. Taffy can get really stubborn when he's got second or third pair. Oh, Ian's hit his flush. Really, really deep game here. 5 10 with the optional 25. Now we got 5k as our most shallow stack. It feels wrong to almost say shallow. 500 big lines, shallow, right? <laughs> We've had some big pots already, haven't we, Charlie? Yeah, the, the, the action has been plentiful and it's still only early days. This time it's Queens John's that. turn. He had sixes did well for him before, now he's got queens. And Andrew's got nines. So this is a, a hand that you could potentially see Andrew squeeze. However, playing this deep, I think I'd prefer a call. Going to go for about six, seven hundred, I'm guessing. Four hundred. Pretty small three bet size. Playing out of position. I like, this play. I like this play from John, just flat calling now. Yeah, well, Andrew has three bet from the big blind, so it looks pretty tight in itself. And the problem with John electing to four bet would mean. Worse hands would fold out and stronger hands would put all the money in. Not looking to get in 600 big blinds with a pair of queens. And King Deuce came along as well. Yeah, the amazing the thing here is if, if Taffy was to see bet here, he might get it through. Oh, he's checked it. Yeah, I don't blame Taffy for this check. Three-way, expecting some sort of ace-x to be around. Going to be some king-queen of diamonds, king-queen of clubs, king-queen of spades, queen-ten of spades. All of these hands are going to be continuing and nines are not looking very good against. Nine for a nine. 
And Andrews delay bet on the turn actually takes down the pot and he gets a better hand to fold in Queens. Yeah, I actually don't don't blame him for folding the Queens there. There's pretty hard to draw where the bluffs are coming from that choose to check flop. So John in seat one, four foot nine K and Ian you saw is now up to seven K, but he's in for ten. So he's still three K down. So approximately five hours of coverage tonight from me, Charlie Reed, and Simon Trumper. Back in Dust Till Dawn again. Really good to be here. For, for you guys that haven't joined us yet, the weekend is just in front of us. Cash Game Festival Week. 15,000 in cash prizes to give away. We want to see you all get to Dust Till Dawn. Well, nice holding to proceed with the game here. King 10, 9 7 suited. Deuce is going to be in there as well. Yeah, ironic if Ian won this hand with Deuces, wouldn't it? After <laughs> putting that beat on uh, Sphinxy <laughs> when he had Deuces. Taffy's got Ace King here. He's three bet to 500. Yeah, I really like the chunky three bet size from Taffy as well from the big blind. Lots of dead money in the pot, playing out of position. That's enough to win the pot. And we've got a new player. Tom Garman is in seat three. He's took over Spinks's seat and he is sitting down with 3,000. There you see him next to Ian. Really is quite the lineup today. We can already see from the early days it's going to be lots of fun. So the cash game streams are back up and running in Dust Till Dawn. This is episode one of the cash game series. Episode one of the Cash Game series, and yeah, really is a work in progress. Looking to get the streams going again in Dust Till Dawn. We've had some new seats ordered, new tables around the place, set up really improving. Really nice to be back in the home of UK poker. And we've got a three bet of 575 with the four deuce from John. Now we are playing super deep, so we could see it continue from Andrew here. Well, we saw Taffy three bet with the nines, didn't we, when John had the queens earlier? Andrew choosing to just get out the way, which is fine. Will the four deuce be shown? No. Nice play from John. Cumulative winning showing there. Look, Mark is up 3.1, Andy 2.1, Kevin a K. John is up 7.85, the rest are losing. So unfortunately we did lose Gary Spinks in quite sick fashion. Over the course of a few hands, really, unlucky in a couple of spots, and then for the rest of it, it was ace king against sixes, running it twice and losing twice after flopping best twice. Really sick scenes here in the 5, 10, 25 of Dust Till Dawn.
nice to see the players at the table are talking to each other. Nice and friendly table. It's what we like to see. Clubs becoming busier. Everybody coming down for cash game week. 15,000 in cash prizes to give away. <laughs> and those twos are out again. Oh, and this time we've got jacks for Taffy. So before we saw it when he had nines against queens. This time he's got jacks against twos. Right, Four-way action here, Charlie. And uh, Mark has got the nut flush draw. The yeah, seven of clubs. Yeah, probably get a free chance hitting it as well because Andrew's not going to be liking the king guy flop with his jack. It's four ways. This is going to be a card that does make him feel a bit better, though. Now, I'm certain we'll see a bet go in on this turn card. Dynamic board that can change a lot. Mark might fancy a stab with his ace seven of clubs. Can confirm that the turn card was another king. Just missing from the graphics there. Oh, we seem to have missed a turn action there. Do apologise for this, guys. Just waiting for the graphics to catch up. Didn't quite manage to see what happened there. Right, so Jax decided to fire the turn and everybody folded. Didn't fancy the shot at making his nut flush. It's, it, it's interesting, really, actually, because after he doesn't bet on the flop, he'd expect him to do so with the king. It might have been a nice spot for him to throw in the check raise, put some pressure on the Jax. But he lets it just fold with the ace high. Of course, all the idea is much easier to say, Simon, when you yeah, can see the cards. Yeah, a lot easier. Ed Sauer said, does anybody know if Charlie Reed will join to do the comms today? <laughs> Hello, Ed. Thanks for joining the stream, mate. One of the local lads. We have a lot of, ba a lot of battles in the cash games back home. Really? Yeah, very good player, Mr. Sauer. So we are very multi-way to this pot. There's been lots of action already in the first 30 hands of the stream. Hopefully everyone is enjoying it the same way me and Simon are. If anybody bets this, they can pick it up. There's only John there has got a flush draw. Well, everyone's got a pair of kings. <laughs> Now is Kevin going to fire big on the on the river if he misses? He's, well, he's not now. This would be bad timing again as John improves to a flush. And then Kevin has got the queen of clubs. He, he did this earlier. Does decide he? to give it up. Now John just deciding which hands to target, what size to choose. And it looks like he's going chunky. Looks like he picked up more pinks, but goes for modest £225. Enough to make Kevin fold his queen high. Yeah, Kevin wasn't going to make the same mistake that he made earlier when, he, when the guy bet 85 and he raised to 500 with the bear. So there's lots of action on this table. 5, 10, 25. At dusk till dawn. The club is starting to fill up as well. Lots of action in the rest of the room. 
every single hour players receiving tickets to put in Sunday's raffle draw for the two 2,500 cash prizes and 1,000 prizes. Yeah, that's a five one thousands as well as the two two and a halves. Tappy's been getting lots of pairs. At sevens, nines. Yeah, one thing definitely to mention is uh, Jordan lockdown a few years ago. Dust till dawn was a place that I definitely missed as long as a lot, a lot of other people. It did take a, a while to reopen. We got there eventually. And things really starting to get back into swing again, Simon. So Taffy and Ian heads up here. Ian with the ace jack. Andy with the eights. But Ian's outflopped him here. We're going straight to a turn. So just a quick check, check. Yeah, he, he, he knows that if he get bets a turn, he gets he'll get paid one one street of value. And Ian coming in for a River Street and two overs to Andrew's eight. He can't be loving life now. Having a spade in hands also not going to be a good thing. Blocking some of the hands that Ian could be bluffing with. I'm expecting Andrew to just get out the way now. You know, the first hand of the night, he had sevens and he didn't put them down when they had third pair. But I don't think he, I don't think he's going to call this time. A well timed fold from Andrew. <laughs> big baggy, big baggy has put in the chat. I might pack the missus and the kids up to move to Nottingham to play every week. That sounds like some advice that we might not be allowed to give, but it's definitely a great place to play. If you're interested in playing in this game, speak to Ryan, who's a cash game manager. And uh, there he is in the, in the shot there. I don't, I don't know what he's doing, giving them food vouchers or something. Uh, this should be the hourly tickets for the draw. Oh, is that what it Sunday. is? Yeah, so any players receiving those tickets every hour for playing, I believe you just write your name on it. Comes to Sunday, you tear the end, you tear the end off, put it in the hat, in the tombola, sorry, and then you will draw for two two and a half K prizes, five 1,000 prizes. We just seen BTB cash game manager Ryan Brodsky there. Big shout out, Ryan. Thanks for sorting out the cover team today. And to the rest of the team at Dust Till Dawn. Really good to be back. So Kevin's been a bit quiet for a while, but this time he's raised with 135 with uh, Ace 8. It's been called by John. John Wetton with Queen Jack off, and he's caught his second pair. He's now got two pair. Kevin obviously needs a 10 for a straight. Got the bare ace of hearts as well, so he could wreck the hearts if they can. Now, this is a spot where I think John wants to play just call. It's a dynamic board that can change a lot. Will he get a clean river and be able to get his two pair to show down? That's going to be a scary one for him. Now, Kevin does make a pair. Well, we also know that Kevin's more than capable of wrecking the flush. Yeah, well recognised that he doesn't actually have showdown. Comes in for a bet of 4.75. And now this is a it's a tough spot for John. But he's going to have to, have to decide. He's going to have some hands that call this bet and some hands that fold. And maybe two pairs just too high, too high of a hand to fold in the spot. Saying that though, it's definitely not easy. Losing to Ace 10, 9 10. Hosts of flushes. It's definitely possible for Kevin to have a missed draw as well, though. I think we're going to see John look this one up. Only has to be right a small percentage of the time to probably make this call. 475 into 1.2k. And 
and he does make the call and the eight is going to be no good for Kevin. That's a good call there by John. For those of you just joining, we've got the cash game week on at dusk till dawn. 15,000 in cash game prizes to give away. And if you're more of a tournament player, the 26th to the 1st of May, we've got a £250 with a £30 reg fee buy-in. 100k guarantee main event. Also, WBT 500 is back, 25th to the 29th of May. 500k guarantee, 560 quid buy-in. Half a million guarantee. Yeah, and during the WPT 500, there'll also be 200k guaranteed high rollers. And um, we're going to have something in the region of 100 players are going to be qualifying into the event through live satellites and through the DTD 100s that have been running with 20 seats added to the prize pool. The next one of those is the 3rd to the 8th of May. We'll have 20 WPT 500 seats added. So a raise to 125 here from Mark with his ace 10. Hold your ground. So Simon, it seems that 125 has became the standard open on this table when the straddle's on. As far as we are aware, it is still an optional straddle, but we're seeing more of them on at the moment. So John with the pair, going to have an easy open here from under the gun, effectively the low jack, playing six-hander for this hand I think. And ace deuce in the shuttle for Mark, probably going to just fold this one here. Peter Reed in the chat, that's a familiar surname. <laughs> Heart of Big, Uncle Peter in the chat, welcome. <laughs> Indeed, hearts are big. We've seen two enough flushes with hearts tonight. Right? We have, yes. Action is plentiful here at Dust Till Dawn. Plenty on the 5, 10, 25 cash game. Plenty of 1, 2s around the room. Starting to fill up now for cash game week. 15,000 in prizes to give away. For those of you who've been to Dust Till Dawn before, definitely a good time to return. For those who have never been, definitely a good time to start. Really is one of the biggest and best card rooms you can find in the UK. Such a, such a special place to play poker. So we've got a question in the chat box, which poker site runs the satellites? Is it still part of poker that works with DTD? No, DTD aren't working with part of poker anymore and they are not running any online satellites at the moment. More news will be confirmed soon as far as online satellites go. 
but at the moment it will just be live satellites. Any schedule information that, that needs to be found can be found on the Dust Till Dawn Casino website. Plenty of tournaments running here weekly, cash games all the time. Pocket Kings. We had Queens earlier when he rejoined the table. He had sixes that won him that big pot against uh, Spinksy with the Ace Kings suited. He, he laid down the Queens on the uh, paired Turnbull when uh, Taffy bet out with the nines. Let's see how he plays these Kings. A nice and clean flop for the Kings. This is going to be one that John likes to see a lot. Has elected to check the flop. And it's going to give up a free card. We're going to be seeing him coming for the bet this time, I think. Double flush draw. Blocking both of those with the Kings. Now it's time to start inflating the pot, though. And nobody with anything to call. Real Gaming Provider has asked, can you still withdraw a party poker currency at the DTD Casino? As far as I'm aware, no, but we will get information on that for you as soon as possible. So let's consider that I don't know for now. In a few minutes' time, I'll let you know if you can still withdraw a party poker currency here at Dust Till Dawn Casino. And the answer is no, unfortunately, you cannot withdraw party poker funds at DTD anymore as DTD are no longer working directly with party poker. Now we have some action. We've got some really big hands here. We've got kings and ace king, some dead money in there as well. Zero kings left in the deck as, as John was dealt King Jack. And playing super deep, I really like this just call of the three bet from Mark. And in the three bet pot, kings are going to be loving this nine high flop again with the overpaired advantage. 1.2k in the pot. This is definitely a board we could see John sticking in some big bets on with that overpaid advantage. Does he elect for just under half pot? And Mark got to continue with his ace high. Which a lot of time is going to be good. Yeah, John definitely capable of having some three bet bluffs, so ace high can still be good here. However, this time he's against the Kings. Yeah, even though 7 8 suited now connects as a straight. With the SPR of 1.5, John just decides to set the money in and a quick fall from Mark. Yeah, with so much money in the pot, this is one that John's just looking 
he's going to be, be one, one to look to get in all the money as fast as he can. If the pot was smaller, he, he, he might have played this a little bit slower. But no way out for Kings on this board. Well, who needs a way out when you're up against Desai, right? Um, just back to our cashiers. And uh, if you have a Luxon Pay account, you can withdraw from Party Poker into your Luxon account, and then you can withdraw the money here at the club. But there is a way of doing it. A couple of comments in the chat about the display of the stack sizes. Um, after every two or three hands, we are showing the chip counts. And while the game is running, we are showing the stacks in big blinds. Um, the big blind stack sizes aren't taking into, into account the straddle. So 686 big blinds, for example, with Mark Stack here would mean he has 6.8k. Our new player Tom is making his first three bet to 150. It's called by Mark with fives and Ian with ace three. Four seventy five in the middle. Flop comes down ten four five. So uh, set of fives for Mark. Tom with the bare ace of diamonds. Mike C C bet here. Backdoor diamond. And backdoor straight draw, he checks it. Mark's loving life with a set of fives. Bets out 225, just under half the pot. Ian could improve with a two. Lays it down, so back to Tom. He was the pre-flop raiser, made it 125 with his ace jack. He's made the call. Obviously, would love to see a diamond on the turn, but <laughs> it's improved for Mark. He's got a full house now. He's made the call here. He's drawing dead. Ah, and the diamonds come, which he could rep with his ace. Surely not on a paired board when it's been bet out on the flop and bet out on the turn. I think Mark could have induced a, a, a bluff here if he put a small bet in, but. Tom gets away from it. I'm very surprised that he called on the turn there. So, John Wetton showing 79k. He was the, one of the player that went bust early on and then came back to the table and bust Gary Sphinx on his first hand. A couple of nice pots and send. Four do suited limps under the gun. I can get behind it. And this time Ian's got a pair of fives. Uh, Tom's got a pair of jacks. So let's see what uh, three bet Tom makes with his jacks. 250, I think he said.
Taffy behind with Ace King, just flat calls. Ian will call for 175 for sure. Open to set mine. And Dawn has said hello from USA. Thanks for joining us, Dawn. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Taffy's hit the king. There's two overs to Tom's Jack, so he's not going to be loving life now. Taffy could have won a much bigger pot here, potentially, if he'd have fall back with the Ace King. Does get one street from the Jacks. Not the card that Tom was hoping for. And Andrew does decide to mix in a check, giving Tom a chance to hit a 10 or a jack. Now, does Tom decide to turn his hand into a bluff? And Andrew sighs and checks back the king and takes down a healthy sized pot. The player's been very honest at the table. Tom said, no, I had jacks. Tom sat down with 3Ks, down to 2.2K now. Not easy to join this table with a short stack, I don't think, Charlie. There's such deep stacks on here. Yeah, for sure. Especially that the 25 is was optional. I don't know if they've changed the mandatory, but it seems like it's on pretty much all of the time now. So buying in with 1,000 or 2,000 wouldn't wouldn't even be 100 big blinds. So definitely, definitely on the deeper side. I did see someone with a pint of beer there. That's what we like to see. Let's go for the game. Green versus Ace King here. See some action. 280, 300, 400. Chunky three bets out of the guy right in the small blind. Yeah, a good size again from Tom. And cut off versus small blind. John's got to make the call. Both players with ace high. Tom deciding to check the flop. Well, this could give John the chance to steal it on the turn. He checks it again, but he's basically turning his hand face up. So will John have a stab at it? Yeah, well recognised from John this is. Just just understanding that not gonna have enough showdown to get to the river and win the pot. Does turn his ace queen into a bluff. And now it's just all a matter of whether Tom believes what John's telling him. And he does decide to call one street. Six. So Tom's ace king high still best. John decided to bet the turn. And does he follow through on the on the river? Would put Tom in a very difficult spot. John waves the flag and decides to give up the pot. I actually think it's a well-timed check. I feel like Tom definitely capable of working that one out. Having said that though, for John to bet the turn, I do feel like he does need to follow through on the river if he's going to decide to bluff the turn. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wade switch to the poker table. We've got a hello from Africa. We really do have the whole world watching. Back in the UK's biggest and best poker venue, Dust Hill Door Casino. 5, 10, 25, no limit holding. And it's cash game. I'm just going to have one get this. 50,000 so now the most shallow stack is 400 big blinds providing shallow gone on. I'm pretty sure this game is a deep, I'm pretty sure they've, they've agreed to make this game mandatory 25 now. It seems like everybody's put on the 25, right Simon? Yeah. There's some slight technical difficulties there. We seem to have lost connection, but we are back on air now. This is missed too much. Range of hands. Anybody could hit this block. 16 players. <laughs> and I do say nine. What's everybody got? Anyone connected with that? We've got a top pair, we've got a middle pair, and a bottom pair, and a two pair. Two pair. And Ian decides to come for the lead of 300 with his middle pair. Look at this tackle just pulls. Yeah, I love this. Evan with his backdoor diamonds. Has he raised the flop? Wow, there's some action going on in this hand. We could see a really big pot here out of nowhere. 9-4 the diamonds, 7-8 and 9-8 the holdings. 1.8k in the middle. This is going to be enough to get rid of Ian. And now, when Ian eventually makes this fold, he's reaching for chips. Wow, this is really incredible stuff, Simon. Yeah, this, this kind of could change how Tuffle plays at home now. Andrew's just called. I really like this. I do really like this play. Keeping that hand face down. An ace on the turn. And now I think Kevin's going to slow down. This, this is not too much going on for him right now. He's still firing, though. Bet's 1k. Oh, for me, no, I'd like to see here. Yeah, this is All amazing. Right. Really keeping in Kevin's bluffs. At the moment, Kevin's just, just betting out, not really knowing whether he's good or bad, so it seems. And I'm afraid it doesn't matter what Kevin does, he's going to be losing this bottom. I'm sure of it. And Andrew decides to check back the two pair. I mean, I think Andrew has a value bet in this spot here, but then it really is tough to work out Kevin's holding. Raising the flop, betting on the turn, checking the river. It was difficult to figure out what sort of region we were attacking there with a value bet on the river. 
And the chip shift once more. And just, got, just under 10k now. With 4k. And it probably wouldn't take an expert, Simon, to say we'll be seeing the first five-figure stacker tonight very shortly. Big hands out there tonight, haven't you? Yeah, the dealer is definitely putting a job in, trying to create the action. And would you believe it? Ace, King, and Queens. How big the fish won't get? It's obviously the key bet at 300. And again, the just call from Mark. I really like this. Button versus big blind. We could potentially have seen a four bet, however, we, we don't want to commit so many big blinds in pre flop. It's just with Ace, King. And Kevin, with that overpair advantage, can use some bigger sizes on this board. <laughs> so we've gone for half pot in the call. It's King on the turn. <laughs> Kevin does pick up, pick up a good shot straight throw. Does slow down on the King. between five and seven hundred sounds good to me. Six fifty. Kevin of course going absolutely nowhere with the Queens. And the river bricks out. Kevin checks once more and a very quick check back from Mark. I'd like to have seen Mark think about that a little bit more and potentially put in the value bet, Simon. Nonetheless, a nice and big pot picked up again. Just over 9,000 himself now. Started with 5,000. Tapping out in front with 9.9, starting with 4,000. John W's in for 8,000, so he's, the, he's just under level. Definitely no need for coffee to keep us awake tonight, Simon. Normally you have like this sort of thing, 7, 3, 7, 8, Jack 2, King 3. There always seems to be a playable hand. There's been see something that causes action. Yeah, there's definitely been some decent card distribution from dealers so far. And when we have had the mediocre holdings, we've been seeing, seeing flops pretty multi-way. Keepers entertained definitely in the booth. Jack Tenor Diamonds in there, live from Dust Hill Dawn Casino Nottingham. What much more could you ask for? Cash game action, 5, 10, 25, hold them. Mark and John have got second pair. Ian with top pair. Backdoor Diamonds, but... And what are we seeing here? John coming in for the raise with the King now. Now this puts Ian in a tricky situation, but he does decide to overcall. I might have elected to just fold the Jack Tell on a floppy assignment and we're, we're bluff catching out of position. It's gonna be difficult to play on a lot of turn cards. Yeah, this one's just going to check through. What do I know? John's reaching for chips again. And this is... This is actually going to work, Simon. Pressure focus. Fires one bullet, follows up the second bullet, and he gets no resistance. 
Yeah, even though the price is, is really good on a call here, Ian forced to make the fall with a player behind. And Mark's going to have a better selection of hands to continue this turn card with. And John picks up the pot. That, here goes in front. He's now showing a £785 profit. He started with uh, 3k early on and lost a lot. Sat back down with 5k. And he's now got £785. So where's the good cards coming now? We've got King 5 off for Mark, 7 3 off for Andy. There we go, Queen Jack of Hearts. Give it a light that hand. John decided to stick with his limping strategy, didn't fancy bumping it up in the cut off with the ace five off but Kevin will take charge from the dealer button with his queen jack suited and we're going to be going three way to the flop again second pair for uh, John and Kevin. Kevin's picked up the flush draw now as well on the turn. So now Kevin's got both options available to him, call or raise. Decides to call. And will he in? Stick around to the odds of hitting the jack. Yeah, I like this one. So we go for the five of hearts, Simon. Did you hear that? You can, you can hear his under his breath. <laughs> he announced? He said, yeah, he said, I've folded 200 quid and I would have hit the nuts. <laughs> Kevin now targeting the ace extra. John's going to contain. And John with a bluff catch of the game with the ace five. So Kevin was the original raise of three flop. Check back the flop to say he's got some sort of showdown. You expect him to, con to continue bluffing with hands that don't connect with the ace and the queen. Hopefully, John will be able to find a fold here. Only really beaten kings that have been turned into a bluff. Yeah. Tough to draw it out where the other bluffs have become from in the spot. Yeah, earlier on, um, Kevin tried to bluff him didn't he, with the bare ace of hearts. He, he might think he's, you know, he's, what, what could he be bluffing me with this time? Yeah, the problem with this one, Simon, is with, with, with Kevin raising free flop and then checking the flop, he's saying he's got some sort of showdown. So. Queen Jack, always possible. The Queens are going to be in there as well. Maybe an ace jack didn't feel comfortable to go three streets. And it looks like John's going to be a non believer in this spot. And Kevin could be about to make another £500, and he does. And he would have got paid, wouldn't he? Kevin would have paid them off something. Yeah, it really was a tricky one for John there. Better in the turn with the best of it. And then Kevin improves on the river.
like we said before, so much easier when you can see the cards face up. But the, the key moment in the hand was Kevin's check back on the flat, I believe. A7 suits in the hijack, definitely playable. Electing to call. I expect John to bump this one up on the button with the Jack Ten of Diamonds. 25 seems good. Just limping along, friendly one. And it's three ways to block. Neither player connecting with the flop. Some action on the turn. And unless anybody's got any crazy ideas, Jack Ten of Diamonds should be uncontested. So Rob said, surprised Ian doesn't call to be fair, was in position. This is when he called with the King 10 on the turn, he would have made a straight. <laughs> Problem with Colney, it is, he, he'll be well aware that he could only have four cards to hit. To make a straight, getting four to one. Getting four to one, you need 25% equity. He only actually had 8% equity. So correctly folding on the turn. Probably brick anyway. Um, little did he know as well, he actually only had three out instead of four, as Kevin did contain the jack in his hand. So yeah, I think it was a, it was a good call for me. And I'm sure if they see if they seen the river card, they'd definitely be in their side. So we are seeing a lot more of the limping strategy now. Less racing going on on this table. However, limp pots can cause carnage. Not a good flop for Kevin's tens. And a lead from Mark. Yeah, I'm not too sure about this. When Mark checks the straddle, very unlikely to have a strong hand on this board. Expect an ace king, ace queen, ace jack, king, ace, jacks, all to raise with the flop. Kevin deciding whether to take a showdown or turn his 10 into a bluff. The 10s are going to be good enough on this occasion. Andy, as taffy as we know him, is still just under the 10k. For those of you just joining us, this is Cash Game Series at Dust Till Dawn Episode 1. The Cash Game Week is currently underway at Dust Till Dawn. 15,000 in Cash Game prizes to give away to players. We have a draw every two hours, two hours. Every hour, players playing at a cash table will we receive a ticket to go into Sunday's prize draw. 2,500 cash prizes to be won, as well as 1,000 prizes. Definitely a great week to play poker in Nottingham. Really is a pleasure to be able to guide everybody through tonight's action. So this hand we don't have a straddle on. And okay, maybe maybe John John's missed the straddle and he's decided to just put in the 25. Says he's raised with 10-5 off. Maybe he just decided to fly and raise because he just missed the straddle. Nice, nice nails with the dealer there. Actually, you see? You got the, I didn't see him. Is it, is it the dealer that's got the uh, cards? The, the, dealer, the dealer's got, got blue and yellow nails. Nice. 
Right, so we've got a raise from under the gun with nine deuce again. I think this is just a matter of maybe placing in the straddle slightly too late. Yeah, players. I think players have agreed now to make this a, a mandatory five, ten, twenty-five. So this is coming as a four bet. We're going to treat it as a three bet, considering that the under the gun raise was more than likely a straddle. So a three bet pot here: Ace King versus Seven Five of Diamonds. And Seven Five of Diamonds flopping best. Not going to be in love with the flop though, with no spades. Now this card's going to make Andy feel a little bit better. It's tough to get any value from John though. Ace King, no spade. Yeah, I like this fall from John. Not going to be huge statistical favourites against some of the bluffs Andy can have. Taking a spade. Going to be in a tough spot on a lot of rivers. Best spot to continue up there. There we go. 5, 10, 25. Just till dawn. We have a 10,000 stack. Anybody wanting to join this game, get on the waiting list. Go and see Ryan behind the poker desk. Ball tournament action come down from the UKPC series. It's running the 26th of April to the 1st of May. £280 buy with 100k guaranteed. Later on in May, 24th to the 29th of May, we have the £560 WPT 500 World Cup back to Dust of War with a 500k guarantee. And on the 38th of May, the Coronation Weekend, we have a DC 100 which will have 20 seats added to the prize pool into the WPT 500. So lots happening at Dust Hall over the next six weeks. Another Ace King out here. This time, John Seat one has got it. Chunky three bet size from Kevin here out the big line with Queen Nine of Diamonds. And again, the just call from Ace King, which I like for the reason we've already said. Playing very deep stacks. Don't want to start playing for stacks with just Ace High. Gonna feel comfortable to come for a bet now though with a King High flop. And now this really is spicy. A nine and a backdoor flush, and, and sorry, a nine and a flush draw for Kevin. Will we see him take the aggressive approach and play a check raise here? We do. Yeah, I really like the small, the small check raise size from Kevin as well on this board. It's a board that can change a lot, not a board that you want to inflate too much money in. Well, and straight away is it is flush. Now John might be able to get away with this one now because. A lot of Kevin's check raise gloves are going to contain two diamonds in his hand. Possibly some Queen Jack, Jack 10, Queen 10. Not too sure if Kevin would take those hands as a check raise. Also possible. And when Kevin bets 700, I expect John to just be able to get away somehow here. 
If he calls the 700, Kevin will be left with 80% of the pot remaining in his stack. Gonna be moving all in on lots of rivers, and John's gonna be in a terrifying spot. It'd be really tough to make a river call. I would really respect the fold on the turn here from John. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, Good decide to call and now it's going to be difficult for him on the river because he's invested so much into the pot. Well, Kevin to check raise the flop with a flush draw. Turn the flush. Oh, and it's a sick river. It's going to put John in the whole world of trouble. Kind of improves his hand but doesn't. Kevin's check raise the flop. Turn the flush. And now this is just going to put John in a disgusting spot. Rip King's definitely a tough hand to lay down. But Kevin telling the story that he has a flush or better. Never expecting Kevin to check raise a worse King, better turn and better for value here. So John's here trying to pick up some potential live reads from Kevin. The thing that might get you paid here, Kev, is the one card peak. With a little look at one card. Why did you look at one card? John's talking himself into a call. Getting an insane price on a call here. And there you go, 5.4k pot going in the direction of Kevin. <laughs> Pretty unfortunate for Alpha John. Well, maybe, they think, maybe there was a way out on the turn card, but can, ne can never blame him for making the call when the price is so good after River, River and Trip Kings. Really tough to get away. Yeah, I mean, I was reading about the, um, the looking at the two cards when you, you know you've got two clubs. We've got some questions in the chat box. Who are the commentators? For those of you just joining us, I'm Charlie Reed. I'm joined by DTD's own Simon Trumper. And we're covering tonight's 5, 10, 25 cash game action. So far, the action's been plentiful. And there's so long to go. Don't go anywhere. One or two, five bigger stacks on the table now as well. Chip counts there, and he's still out in front on 10k, and John is our bottom at 2.5k. Blind to show on his 5.10. Uh, the game started as a 5.10 with an optimal 25. Under four of hands tonight, half had his pocket on. Maybe the table to feed for a man of 25. Seems that way. And the room is definitely filling up here at Dust Till Dawn. Lots of cash games available at the moment. I expect the weekend will be will get even busier. And uh, there's a really, really great atmosphere in Dust Till Dawn. There's always been quite a togetherness between the players. Really friendly card room. Absolutely fantastic place to play.
really is tough to find problems with the card room, Simon. You know, food menu is great. Players are really friendly. Tournaments are plentiful. Huge guarantees. Good cash games. Yeah. Really, really, really good for the card room. Crystal Dawn's the, the type of place, once you go there once, you've always got to return at some point. And look at that for the river, improving to six is full. John coming in for some value, what size did he choose? Yeah, he goes polar. Saying he's got a really, really strong hand here, he's either missed his flush draw or he's got a hand like pocket sixes and Ian just looks at him like it really is he gonna make the call with the four or will he believe the story that John's telling him and it's a well timed fall for me Yeah, I really like the size and choice there from John. Saying he's got absolutely nothing or absolutely everything. It's a great bet size. And there you go, at the moment, Mark's winning all the money. 3.6k payday so far. Looks like we could be set for some more multi-way action here. And we've got a whole host of hands in. We've got four deuce off, eight six off, nine four off, jack three off. Let's go five ways to flop. Nobody's got a pair. Nobody's got an ace. Nobody's got a king. Let's see what happens. Eight, seven, eight. Lock chefs through. Fish for John. Two pair for Andy. We've got a book shot for Ian as well. Attack is on 10.1k. Started with uh, 4k, so he's, he's up 6k. And the percentages that we could see on the screen but also the percentage each player has of the chips in play. Something that we more commonly see in tournaments. Also with not on the cash table. We've had water ordered, barley's rushed with warm milk. What's going on? John decides the 8 3 off's a little too wide. Coming in for the 3x is John with the ace 3 off from the cutter. Ball out of position with Queen Jack from Andy. And also Queen Jack from Mark in the shadow. Three way action. Menu 2 0 up at home. 15 minutes to go. And no 
That's on 9-5 Goose from John. And he picks up the dust draw on the turn. John decides to bet 125 when taking up an ace. Could have gone either way here. Pretty difficult to get called twice with an ace and no kicker. But does decide to bet for protection. And he's going to just take this pot down when he checks back. Queen high, no good, sir. Seems to have slowed up a little bit in the last few hands. Just a casual forty thousand on the table at the moment. And Simon asks, Simon shall shall receive. We've got Queen Jack and ten nine suited. And that could potentially cause some carnage. The 8, 9, 10 pop. Ace Queen's in there as well. Yeah, this one's got to be bumped up. No more limping. Yeah, it's a good chunky size for me as well. Ah, tough he's got kings. Wowzers. 400. Not yeah. Get rid of Ian, is it? No, no. Andy's given Ian far too good of a price to fold his queen here. However, he does look incredibly strong, choosing a very small three bet size from the small blind, out of position to the whole table. But to play as 19 suited. Gonna extract some value for now, at least from Ian. So, Kings remain the best of it, however, on this board, probably best to proceed with caution. However, Ian doesn't flop anything, so he's going to get away with it. But, takes any sort of aggression from Ian now, Andy would be in a, in a very, very awful spot with Kings. Can never feel good if he was to be raised on this flop. Expecting Ian to just lay down and let Kings take the pot. Um, the fact that he's only bet 500 when he, when he raised pre-flop to 400, Ian's going to know he's got a strong hand. John would have loved that flop with his 9 suited. Yeah. Yeah, it was quite a large bet for the board. 7, 8, 9, 2 spades. It's probably a board where range wants to bet really small there or do lots of checking, but does decide to fire out for 500 and gets the ace high to fold. Denying that equity. A good results for the Kings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it became a problem though, betting out on that slot if it counts with any sort of aggression. Kings wouldn't have felt so good. Loose call here for Mandy on the bottom with the Queen 8 off. Gonna invite Kevin in from the travel with King 9. A very good flop for Tom's hand. The next for a 60% continuation bet. And nobody got anything to pay with. Oh. 
those of you just joining us, we are now streaming 51025 live from Dust Till Dawn Casino Nottingham. Cash game week here at Dust Till Dawn, 15,000 in cash game prizes to give away. Every hour, players will receive a ticket that they can put into the Tom Bowler on Sunday to have a chance of winning the 2,500 cash prizes and 1,000 cash prizes. Every two hours, high hand prizes for players playing at cash games. Sorry, is it high hand prizes or, or the, uh, the, the lucky seat? It's high hand, right? No, no, it's, uh, it's the, they draw the seat. They draw the seat, yeah. So all you have to do to win one of the prizes is be sat in a cash game seat. And if you are sat at table three, seat four, and table three, seat four is shown on the screen, you will receive the prize that has been allocated to that hour. We've got some £250 prizes, some £500 prizes. Could be a 1K there as well, Simon. I know the biggest prize comes on Sunday from the draw, yeah, the two, two and a half Ks, yeah. There's two of those and there's five one Ks. Very good excuse to come and play a cash game at just till dawn. Some nice break back for the players. Chips haven't changed so much over the last few hands, so definitely due to some action. Few hours into the show now. Not, not bad for a few hours worth, right? Mm -hmm. 2,000 an hour. Uh, I like this. Andy using his big stack opens up the hijack to sixty with green nine. John decides to come along with King Nine from the big blind, and that's going to price in Ian with his suit of Jack from the fellow. Ian's in front now. And he's given up on this one. And now Ian definitely going to be coming in for some value with a full house. John doesn't snap fold, does have some showdown with, with King High. Doesn't put the cape on for the stream. And Ian shows his jack. Shows the two. Oh, he showed the two. Started with 4k, he has got 5k, but he's in for uh, 10. You see that on the screen? Uh, uh, this is kicking in tough, this is what it is. It seems like the players have discussed to put on a second straddle. 
John's decided to pop it up in the push up to 180 with the King Queen off. Up from Mark, and he raises this time to 100 with Jack 10 off. Kevin's going to like this with his pair of jacks. How much do you think he'll 3 bet to? 300? Well, let, let's see what John's doing first. 325 with the 6 3 season. <laughs> Kevin Cole call for the jacks. We've got some action over here. Which is surprised that nobody's ordered the famous DTD spicy chicken pasta yet, actually. So John getting out of line with the 6-3 suited. Does he choose to fire on the flop? 1K in the pot. Continues to 450. I expect Kevin will be sticking around for at least one more. However, maybe not because he's still got Mark behind the back. So won this cup about six times. Now John's in no man's land. He's bet the flop. He's had a player call with a player behind. He's the five of diamonds on the turn. Does turn a three, however doesn't improve into showdown once Kevin calls the flop. Pretty much capping himself to pocket pairs and queen X. And with a 775 battle, Kevin's got to be feeling in some sort of trouble now with his jacks. Can he somehow find a call on the second street? I think this is going to get the job done, Simon. What's Kevin gone for here? This is incredible. This is more of a... Is he... Is Kevin turning Jackson to a bluff? This can't be a raise for value. Like, to get caught by what? And Kevin just... Raises with the best hand. Bluffing with the best hand. Sends John straight into the bin. And a nicely timed raise there from Kevin. How did he do that? Teach me. I don't know. That's, uh, Teach me. Maybe he's seen some of the previous hands now. Or been told some of the moves that uh, John been doing. Remember he made that play earlier on with two four diamonds, didn't he? Kevin certainly stuck his seatbelt on today, ready to come to play at Dust Till Dawn. Ben Lachter said, damn yeah, that pasta is good. You can say that again, sir. Made me hungry now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, on a, I'm on a diet at the moment. I can't start thinking of all that cream. 
Yeah, Dust Till Dawn also has one of the best menus in the casino in the UK. Really good food. Huge compliments to the chefs at Dust Till Dawn. We've got a couple of hands out here, look. Tapping with nines, marked with sixes. I'm going to use my one time for the 965, Simon. Yeah, I'd have got that for you. Funny, Tuffy threw back with the old lines before. This time he just flattened it. Yeah. Andy definitely showing some form of balance. Late position opens and just calls with the nines. And one of these players has got to continue on the clock. Once Andy calls, pretty tough for Mark to continue now. May fancy flicking in for the undertone, seeing what the turn brings. One K in the middle. Safe again for John to come in for a second suite of value. The only kings that Taffy should have here is specifically King X of Spades. King of Diamonds, obviously rules out the King X of Diamonds float. And now Andy should just give up. Like, Yep, good time fold. No, it's cold. It seemed like cars were getting thrown over the line to me there. And some nice value extracted there from John. Takes down the 1.7k pot. A little bit surprised that Andy continued on the turn there. Does still beat some ace queen and ace tens. Yeah. And from a peak of 10.6k, he's down to 9.4k now. Ben Lafty has asked, is the spicy chicken pasta still on the menu? Yes, it is. I had it the other day without the pasta. Without the pasta? <laughs> but it still, it still doesn't count for your diet. What's going on there? He's savage on the bed. He has spiky chicken pasta without the pasta. Could have at least stuck on a panini or something. Here we go. The hands rolling out again. Ace Jack's in there. Queens is in there. And don't forget the 9 7 off. I really like this three bet size from Tom in position here. And he's decided that he's got jacks, but he's misread his hand. Flop of the Queens, but not going to be hating it as the aggressor either. Doesn't want to hit one on the turn. I think this is one Tom's going to be checking back now. Has come into the sea bed of a third. Obviously in three bet pots, this board is going to be favourable for Tom's range. The board that he's going to be wanting to be betting a lot of the time. However, Queen's could have been a good one to mix in as a check. But he does extract at least 
one piece of value from John. Hoping to hit one of his queens or an ace. And now I think Tom's definitely going to want to start proceeding with caution. Not a hand strong enough to go for multiple streets of value. And now Tom's got to decide that we're going to try and target it on 10x, or are we going to take our show down with the Queens? Who's come in with the thin value bet with the Queens? Unfortunately, John, nothing to match the bet with. thing I like about Crystal Dawn is how late the restaurant actually stays open. You can seem to yeah. order food pretty late in this place compared to other casinos in the UK. Yeah, they normally stay open until about an hour before they close. Yeah, really, really, really good place to play, you know, the togetherness in, in the room between the players, the staff. The staff have became quite the family over the years. As an ex-freelance dealer, I have friends who told me that TTD is the best place to work. Really does represent how a poker room is supposed to be run. <laughs> Players looking relaxed now. He weaved into the stream. Is that a Guinness? I'm a, I'm, when I drink Guinness, it's always with black guns. It's, an, uh, it's a questionable one, but that's how I enjoy my Guinness. I've not actually had a Guinness for a couple of years. Maybe I'll take one after the show tonight. I was in Dublin two weeks ago, so I uh, had my fill of Guinness yeah. this year. <laughs> Time Mark's being funky with the six four of diamonds. It does flop too fair, but it's going to be a bad one. So John check calls on the flop here with pocket tens. And a full house for Mark. Oh, and John's, John's actually bet here, so... Yeah, I like this, I like this race. And John decides to just call the tent and he's going to get the bad news. I actually think Mark could have been a little bit more greedy with his size in there. However, does win a nice 1.5k pot with a full house. 
And it's good to see that everyone's sort of in the middle there with the VP, quite an active table. Everyone's happy to stick in the ball, form the raises, providing the action here at 5, 10, 25 and DCD. Jack Falk says, Team Ro Team Reed is a national in the booth. Big shout. So Jack. Really is amazing to be able to commentate here in Dust Till Dawn. Enjoying the show. I hope you are too. Waiting for it to properly connect though. The only time we've seen it properly connect is when Spinksy had them but he lost both boards. Yeah. Coming in for the chunky three and a half exciser is John from the button with the ace king and nobody finds anything to fight back with. be a matter of time before we see some pink chips getting moved across the table again, Simon. Yeah, As we know that John W likes hands like this. Yeah, this hand's definitely going to be worth at least 25. Coming in for the open and the cut off for the 7 5 suited. I like this. Kevin coming along on the bottom with the threes, looking to hit one of them. And Tom defending with the 6 5 off. A low flop is what we want to see. and stab the freeze. Choose his pot for the size. Besides, he wants to end the hand right now, and it looks like he's going to just achieve just that. Nice play from Kevin there in position. What's that he's drinking? A mojito? And then he'll come up to... Kevin rolling back the shoulders, relaxed, taking it down with the breeze. Quite the spin up. Ace, ten in the hijack, raises to 75. No sugar, you got a big in here, just as I've the door here. Yeah, yeah, we've only seen aces once tonight, and that's when Ian had them picked up the blinds. Yeah.
King Jack of Diamonds in a small, very playable hand. Three bets to 400. This is a really big size. And John makes the lay down. She was away. Fifteen hundred, easy come, easy go when playing five, ten, twenty-five. You'll be looking to get involved in some pots. Kevin opens up the hijack. John calls the cut off with ace nine off. This is one we could probably just fold, potentially even three red sometimes. He decides to come in with 75 as well. Not being too much like three bet on this table, though, Simon. We've seen the, the king jack suited, that's about as wild as it's got. We've not seen much people getting two out of line. We've seen the six three suit at once, actually. A lot of the time, though, we were happy to just come along and call with the mediocre hands. Ian says you're not checking to me twice, I'll have it. I'm Tom with fours, Taffy with ace queen, three bits to 200. 125 to call to Tom. Thanks to call. Flop is safe. Ace Jack King for uh, Andy's hand. Yeah, 
So Tom Better hanging on the flop, Tapper stayed in with a pair of tens. He changed on the turn, it goes check check. Small pot to Andy. Creeping his way back up to 10k, he's on 9.6. Mark in second place on 8.7, he's up 3.7k, started with 5k. Hand in the high jack for Tom. Opens up to 75. Kevin deciding 10 9 is good in the big. And completing the shuttle from King Jack. Also, a hand that some players might have decided to squeeze there. However, John decides to call his best. Tom decides to check back the flop. And Kevin makes the best of it, and he's got to take down this pot. Maybe a little bit of frustration there. Just announced he's doing his money slowly and he can, he can feel some big hands coming up. Well, I can feel some big hands coming on. I'm just doing my, doing my money slowly here. Raised to 75 from Tom with a pair of sixes. Andy calls for 7 9 suited. Mark calls with Queen Jack off. Kevin and John fold. And Liam calls with Jack 8. So four players to this block. Set of sixes for Tom. And he's got something to work with as well. Top pair, back door straight draw, back door flush draw. Just calls on the flop. I think you have to extract the most money out of this.
Tom decides to bet 75% pot on the turn. Can do this with some bluffs as well to really put pressure on Andy's seven and six X he's gonna contain in the hijack. And unfortunately, it looks like it's gonna get the job done for Tom. Andy said he didn't like the king. Mm. Soon he'll find out that the king saved him quite a few chips. It's really surprising to see everybody's being pretty equally involved. Great to 200. What's happened here? What on earth's happened here, Simon? 200. Looks like. Uh, yeah, there's four pinks in the pot. Yeah, Mark raised to 200 here, Corbett Ace 10. <laughs> What's happening here? This, this is crazy stuff. So Ian's decided to call 200 free from the big with these 10. He's led Jack A. Deuce with these 10 for 300 on the flop. Mark's a non-believer. And it's actually a really good turn card for Ian to continue battling on, but he misses that spot. King, nine, ace required. 10 would make a straight for Mark. And yeah, I'm surprised. After Ian donking the flop, I'm surprised yeah. that he didn't continue to turn. With a double gutter, would have got the job done as well. Yeah, that was a strange one. Bradley said, go on, wet. We've got some John Wetton fans in the house. Best of luck to him. Suddenly playing 5.7k. now improving on the turn to a pair as long as it's good shot straight through and Kevin bluffing with his clubs Andy with a 79% lock on his hand going to get him the check mark It's another one of those spots where, even though Kevin's at a five, it's not really any significant showdown. He's going to have to bluff a bit. He wants to win this pot. I think I heard out saying that he'd pull a little bit. Kevin bets really big, saying he's got. Oh, I'd love to see Andy pull it. 
Oh, too much. Too much. Have the nine is good. He blocks Jack nine. Does have a club in his hand, which he wants Kevin to have. Ah, uh, this this is a tough one, but could switch it out. He's kind of in disbelief. And he does fall. Kevin gets away with one. Nice river play from Kevin there. You can sense a few players at the table might be wanting to create some action now and make something happen. Here we go, 175 with Queen 6 suited. Did a nice air could sense some action coming. And he decided that Queen 5 should have been worth £175 somewhere in the world before. Pompey back to a flush door for Ian, a whole host of nothing for Andy. I think he can beat my Keynes this time. Wow, what a bet from Ian, 400. Eight four in the low jack for Kevin. Got to be getting thrown into the mud. I hope. And ten in the high jack for John. Makes it one hundred. Ian's decided to come along on the cutoff with a six off. I'd like to see Tom make this four five hundred. Does choose 400. Yeah, I like this in position with the king queen suited. Good hand to mix in as a three bet. Ian's dead money in the pot as well. Not expecting Ian to have too many strong hands in his cut off flat and range. And 2.2k behind. What would John play? I'm expecting John to just call, but he may decide that the aggressive approach is the, is the way forward. Pretty sure that folding won't be an option here. John is a relatively short stack in this cash game lineup and does decide to move in. I like this from John. And Tom is not going to be able to call off. If he's seen John's hand, I'm pretty sure he would have liked to take the gamble. However, when facing a four-bet shove, King Queen, usually not in great shape, would have been flipped on this occasion.
So Mark is at 4K, Kevin's at 2.9K. Um, Andy is actually up, saying he was down 1K, but he's actually up 4.9. Sure, Andy won't mind as long as the cashier knows he's up 4.9k and not down 1k. Yeah, Ian quickly takes the lead, is 7 deuce. I haven't found your three bet here. Sorry, Mark. With his ace nine suited. Yeah, we're, we're playing very deep here. Definitely a good time to, to put in the three bet. Small blind versus button. Andy's going to be opening a whole host of hands from that position. So Mark, with his ace blocker, can start to put some pressure on his button open range here. Got a cold call in the big line from John with the sixes. And Andy's going to come along in position with his king eight suited. Just on the phone, it's on the phone. Yeah. 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 Yeah gets the folds and takes down the pot. And now he has the most chips on the table, 9.7k. Started with 5k, so he's 4.7 up. Yeah, definitely good to protect protect the ace, take down the pot. However, have an ace king, ace queen, ace jack there would have been a much, much more clear bet as they can get caught by worse hands over several streets. Quite difficult to get with the streets of value from worse hand and ace nine there. Wins the pot, takes down a thousand. I'm a four way again. Eight six suited for me this time, Simon. Can I change my mind? Yeah. John absolutely smashes the floor. Mark's got a little bit of something going on as well. John's decided to pay 55 for a straight flush. Yeah, I really like this just call from John on the flop as well. Wow, so it's a full house. Yeah. Yeah, the reason why this call on the flop from John is so good is because when you raise on a rainbow board, you kind of capping yourself to a queen ten and two pairs and you know, there's lots of bad cards on the turn for a hand like king five a ten starts to make you worry a queen an ace another jack potentially however this is one of the cards that would not have worried him. and it's given him a check mark he's got everybody drawing dead on the turn so it looks like kevin's folded our graphics haven't quite picked that one up yet. Slightly behind with the graphics here, so it went check, call on the turn. And the river's gone check, check. I think. And King's full, just about beats the Queen high. <laughs> Yeah, I really like the way John played that hand. This guy does hand very well on the flop. Continued the story on the turn. And Mark didn't seem to take the bait on the river. Good time give up though because John's gonna have a lot of Jack X, but they're gonna take a similar line.
Don't forget there is plenty of uh, tournament action here at Dustin Dawn as well. This week we have the cash game series. For each hour you play, you get a raffle ticket which goes into the drum on Sunday. And the two, two and a half thousand prizes and five one thousand pound prizes are going to be drawn out during the day. But also here we have coming up next the KPC series, 26th of April to the 1st of May, £280 buy-in with a guarantee of 100k. Then at the end of May, 24th of May to 29th of May, we've got the WPT 500, welcome back. £560 buy-in guaranteed at half a million. And in the middle we have, on the 38th of May, we have a DTD 100 with 20 WPT 500 seats guaranteed in the prize pool. So lots of action happening. But just have a look at the website, DTD Live, and uh, we'll see you here at Dustin Hall. Wow. Sini and uh, Threebet um, earlier with King Jack of Diamonds have got it through. And this time it's Threebet with King Jack and uh, this flop completely. John W's called in with six four and flop two pairs. Interesting to note as well, I believe that John Wetton's favourite hand is actually six four suited. And now you can see why. Tough to understand where more money's going to come from in this hand, but nonetheless, he's got two pairs and there's 1.2k in the middle. I think uh, Ian's lucky that the card didn't come on the turn. If he'd have hit a king on the turn, he would have paid off a lot more. We've got a comment in the chat, perfect flop, perfect flop for Wex, go on lad. Yeah, you can't get much better than that. Flopping the two pair with the six four, back door diamonds working as well. Mark just pulls 25 here with Ace Jack. Yeah, we've seen a few players at this table mixed between the limp and, and the opening strategy. Mark decided to come in with the limp from the hijack this time with Ace Jack. I like the way Tom flops up there and just checked over, doesn't want to lead out and turn his hand face up. However, he's allowed Mark to make the best hand. Tom does come out betting with the A7 with these diamonds. Mark calls and Ian check raises this card. Not too sure what I think of this one. Can definitely still be a host Jack Extra, have a better kicker than an eight in there. Tricky to tell why he shows the race with this one. Surprised Tom's came along as well actually. What sort of plans he got going on? And Ian's best four of the seven, two players. And he's Jack's fella. Well, yeah, Ian's just, he's, he's, he's overvalued this one. Pretty tough to check raise the turn and get caught by worse hands than Jack 8. <coughs> and Mark takes down the 1.5k pot with the ace jack. Paid off for a drop raise for three clock in that hand. Yeah. He's, he's on his best behaviour because the cameras. They all said to him he's been revving up. Top Jack. He did. 
Yeah, yeah, on the board. You've got a big board in Matt, all the places. Take the board. Two little worm buddies. What time is going to hit half? Fuck's sake. I'll leave the councillor this morning. Yeah, he had his. That had him in Moose after an hour and a half. Fucking anger management. Yeah, so he said, be on your best behaviour. When you've got the night again. King Queen and the small blind seems like a good one. Besides, just just call it. A completing the big from the ace deuce. And Andy is waving the flag already with eight three. Tom decided to come for a lead with his good shot straight draw and overcard. <laughs> Have a bit of that. 150. Two seconds of play with the flag. Andy putting the pressure on. Three on the 544 foot. From the shadow. Oh, I was worried you'd have something. Sorry, that's on. He's never going to lead this strong hand on the flop. Going to the sword. Yeah. Oh, If you get hands on the side, you the study. Come and join us if you want to borrow Yeah. 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 And this is a hand that we could see Mark potentially squeeze, but calling is, is also fine. Yeah, no, I think he's calling here because of the players that are in the pot. He knows that Ian's on tilt. And flopping 60% of a royal is Mark. Bottom pair is John. And the open ended in position for Ian. And this is a massive bet for me, and Ian's deciding if you want to play, we're playing for it all. And it's going to get the job done. I don't see any way John can continue versus this size. 125% in position for Ian. For everybody watching, just joining us, this is the 5 10 25 cash game here at Dustail Dawn. ETD Live episode 1 of the cash game series. This week we've got the cash festival, 15,000 in cash to give away every two hours. Doing the draw, choosing the seat, who's the lucky player to get £250 prizes, £500 prizes. You get a ticket every hour, gets put into the Tom Bowler on Sunday by yourself. And you have a chance to win £1,000 cash prizes and £2,500 cash prizes. So if you're already in Nottingham, but around the corner, just till dawn, poker club. If you're not in Nottingham, you've got every reason to come here now. Yeah, I'm way down a couple of chicken chips. Non-stop action. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, they just come on now. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
time, so I mean, you need to do not as much as I thought. Yeah, 40 minutes, but everyone seems to kind of Yeah, nice. I might have What do we have here? John John seems to have figured out that Tom hasn't got a very strong hand here. However, I don't expect Tom will be folding. Middle pair and a backdoor flush draw. Got to continue once, right, Simon? Yeah, absolutely. Now we you have an inflated pot at 880. Tom's going to be needing to make a bigger hand to feel comfortable in this pot. And it's the dream turn. If we were going to think of any turn, that's one we'd want. It improves John to a double gut shot and now Tom to two pairs. Well, it's not, it's not the O's it's out, it's O's is at the back of the yard. And yeah. when it's one machine here, it's echoing around that see yard. John, you know Tom Ray is here. And as you go, the, the, the lane's probably from here to the end of the road. Oh. Well, John did check raise the flop. On the front. So he is going to check raise flop with of, hands like threes, hands like of, eights, um, hands like queen eight suited. Potentially some yeah, nine tens, jack tens in there as well. Um, I think just cause the play here, keep the bluffs in. Again, it's pretty tough to find out what's going to call worse and then pay off a jab on the river. Tom does decide just to come along and call. And if any kings or nines about, no rips out. And John, balls of steel, you've got to give it to the lad. He's fighting through for a fair battle. Check race flop, best turn, best river. He's taking a really strong line here, but Tom has a really strong hand. Thank you very much. I'm just some of that sauce. Chili, lovely, thank you. And versus a half pot size, and there's Tom. We're just never going to fold two pairs here. We have to look it up yeah, and then massive, take down the pot. Yeah. Where we turn left, just turn right here. Fucking huge, yeah, there. Oh, they have more fucking fires there. Tom does make the call. Yeah. That many fires there. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm oh, nice. No, it's fucking all that weed stuff they call it. All the plastics are from the. The and Tom was a replacement for uh, Spinksy, who went past early on. Sat down with uh, 3k. And uh, he's up to 6.2k now. Yeah, so a good, good performance so far. Up Tom. The aggressive route's always very fun to watch. John's check raise on Queen 8 3 with Ace 10. Maybe a little, little bit wide, probably want to generate some bluffs that connect in some way, shape or form with the board. However, on the turn, he did look at this one out. It was something to improve to. On the river, the river card. He's got to try and make two pair falls. He might have to go a little bit bigger than half pot, but... The kid's got heart, I've got to give him that. Right, so I want to say 
Thanks very much to Simon. His time is up for today. And I'm going to invite a familiar face back into the booth. Back in the comms again. Me and James Ablett. Welcome to the stream, James. Hello, sir. How's it going? Good fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, and eagerness to put on a show, and we've definitely seen that. Who's been the most exciting player so far? Yeah. Well, I like some of the things that John's done. He's shown, he's shown some very aggressive, aggressive lines. Um, one spot before, check raise queen a3 with ace 10. Check raise and all, it's always going to be a good thing. Aggressive routes are, all, are always going to be winning plays in poker, but I think the hand selection could have been a little bit better in that spot. Did improve to a double good shot on the turn. Hold and foul two pair and was not going to fall for the half pot size on the river. But yeah, John's been an exciting player to watch. Tom Joy did late. How's, how's Tom been getting on since he joined in? Tom's been, okay. Tom been very solid since he joined the game. We're going to see the bar in the corner. Uh, really yeah, the last game we can just till dawn. Great time to be in Nottingham. Good to see you. Great to be back. I'm calling this no matter what I've got. Just to play okay. hand with Sam. Our position. Uh, no spoiler over there. We've got, we've got someone else joining the party. Asking to be back in Nottingham this weekend. If you're in Nottingham. Just be at the still dawn. If you're not, you've got every reason to be. If you're not a cast game player, just still dawn also has a regular tournament. A couple of big ones coming up as well. You take pieces here. 26 of May, uh, 26 Two of uh, July. No. I'm just trying to figure out which months come in what order again, guys. Give me a second, I apologise. So, the UK PC series is coming up. £280 by an 100k guaranteed main event. And the WPT 500, 25th to the 29th of May. Half a million guaranteed, £560 by in May. Also, two high rollers. Live satellite for those live in club in DTD, not online for the meantime. More news about online satellites coming back soon. No longer affiliated with Party Poker, so you will not find any satellites for DTD comps on Party Poker. Yeah, real, real togetherness in the just go on card room between the staff and the players. Some of the biggest guarantees you can find in the UK. Arguably the biggest and best poker room in the whole of the UK. My favourite for sure. Surprised to think it's got a name change from here to Taffy. So everybody knows that name is Taffy, right? Because the Andrew doesn't go with the Jacks. He's just bound. In the effect of loads of his handy, so he's got pretty strong handy as six handed. Oh, like I say, oh, oh, John's field kings. Like I say, John's definitely got to play. And again, it's just a matter of timing. The lad's quite unlucky. Made a couple of plays, someone's had two pairs, someone's had kings. I do like John's style. John was telling me actually that 6 4 suited was his time. And, and here he is with 7 for the suit. And he had 6 4 suited before. I made yeah. it clear that 6 4 was his favourite hand. Six Lost the suit here. <laughs> right, so we've got a 4 bet here. It's very rare we've seen a 4 bet. This could be one of the very few 4 bets that we've seen tonight. And John has got a really strong hand. And can I just say the size as well? I love the size of this year. Yeah. Two and a half X four bet for the Kings. What the attack is going to do here? And he's going to do here. Just 
Yeah, and be true. John's come along with a 7 4 suited as well. Given he actually is today, the lad, he's ready to play. Seatbelts on. And this is a board. Yeah, SPR of one. John's going to move in all of the money. Can't argue with that, James. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Bad. Just like, look at, look at this. Look at this head. Does not like this. I'm not saying Andy's going to be folding here in any in any way, shape, or form. However, when John does go all in into two players here, really you can now with pocket jacks. But you really can't blame him if he does decide to put in two thousand here and match the bet. Maybe, maybe it was just with the whole uh, fit tell off to try and get John in behind. Like John W in behind. So. It's got top pair. Run it twice if you want, one of them said. Right, running it twice, it, it, it's, it's, it might be a little bit of a. It might, it might be a scary option today. Gary Sphinx got it in. Ran it twice. I think it's all that. Ace King versus Sixes made the best time on the floor and then lost twice. Now something's telling me, James, we're not going to see the Kings lose twice here, but who knows? Tough the Kings to lose twice here. Both can be a sick old game. Any jacks in the deck with a chop pot. Not on the first one out. And Andy's going to need a jack, otherwise, he's going to be losing 4,000 pot, 6,000 pot, sorry. And fills up, sorry, not fills up, he makes a top set on the river. And he's going to take down a 6k pot as John. And that's just an unfortunate one for Andy there. Well done, John. Pretty disgusting spot when John goes all in into two players. The SPR of one, though, you've got another pair to the ball. Very, very tough to get away. You can hear him while play it talking as well, which is really cool. We were talking about it, and we discussed the thing. Nothing you can do there, sir. So. No, you can't, you can't. He's doing that with those kids. Yeah, that's what I thought. This chip, all this. Charlie's just taking down the selfie of us there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got the selfie gun. Yeah, yeah, if there's a queen on there, you'll probably get away from it. It's a cool head. Back in the booth, baby! <laughs> always gets out of jail, doesn't he? Uh, always gets out of jail. They'll be locked up now. 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 they if you want to know the answer, then it's going to have to be Charlie Pete Polka on Instagram. I can let you know the answer. Well, I can feel a massive flop coming on for me now. This is the one, Neil. This is the one. I'm really angry sometimes, but I love his passion. This is the one. You hear him like, this is the one. This is the hand now. I'm going to win all the money. <laughs> Ian's a very passionate guy about this game. Look at this, we've got some five-way action. 10-4 ops in the mix. And Andy just fired him into four play. Just double good shot. Blocking two different straights. Kevin scored with top pair in the upper hand. Yeah, Kevin's got a really good bluff catcher here. It's, however, like... Put Andy on a bluff and bet into four players. It's the easiest thing to do. And on this card, Kevin's going to be in some tough place to bet from Andy. And Andy is just fearless. 701.2. I think this gets the job done. What do you think, Ab? Those hits. Kevin just like, doesn't like to be bluffed. Likes to make the right moves. Just so. Like Kevin is the guy that's going to make this. Oh, it's just so, so difficult though, like when you stop and break down the hand, 
and he's best at turning to four players. How many hands does Ace-5 lose to? It's not tough, he's dragging in the chair. Nice play from Andy with the 10-4. What have you got, 10-4? Bloody hell, he's put what? Ian, Ian Gats going there as well with his uh, looks on t shirt on, repping. Uh, repping the table sponsor, the felt sponsor. Yeah, all of no equity, but equity gloves, definitely look good on the screen. I'm going to start hitting charts now. Yeah, I can feel it. Last, I can feel it. You feel it? Certainly not going to win the pot without better than 10 high. Talking about the spice that you can pass, I'm just looking back on the uh, the chat here. Ben Lafferty. Top of the Talking about that uh, spice chicken casserole. <laughs> 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 Who's excited to watch that game? You can think of that. Who was type in London London? It's capable. Capable of making a movie and being. I've liked this play from, from, from Kevin. I've liked Kevin's yeah. involvement so far in the screen. Very solid, very aggressive. Look at that, Kevin. This is the right thing. I feel like Kevin gets a feeling when it's a good time to do something, and he goes with his gut. <laughs> Be careful mentioning the spicy chicken pastas, the valleys. The valleys are going to hate us. 39 spicy chicken pastas to the one two, please. As soon as I see that one two grand, it's like, I can't. Anybody's watching it, it should be, of course. Some back sizes on the table here. I saw John make that, uh, that bluff earlier with the 5-4 and then Taffy just had the ace jack. Was it on like the 7-8-9-10? Um, yeah, and 5-4 yeah, yeah, speed. Yeah, yeah. Interesting hands to say the least. Yeah, very interesting. Maybe, I'm just thinking that maybe he picked something up. He was weak. Made the move, didn't he? Standard open here, has it been? Steen? Well, the channel of 25 wasn't managed to start with. It seems like everybody's been doing it for a few hours now. And the 125's been used a lot, the 80's yeah. been used a lot. Oh, John Wetton's got his 6 4 2 idea, what's he going to do? This is his hand, apparently, this is his hand. For the second time, John Wetton's dealt 6 4 6 They make two pair first time around. What about this time? So he's in the strand here with his favourite. Yeah, they do, actually. Uh, Taffy's got an open end. And Mark doesn't really have anything. So John's got the best time right now. Mark's attempted a bluff in his way. John seems to be running quite good with the 6 4. He's made two pair for the second time. Slightly different flashing this time. Six. Would you believe this? He's called it in, lad! I went down three, I was like, I've got two rounds, I've pulled out the other five. 
I ended up winning 10 on the night. You know, the two, three hands. the microphone with him. Gonna be hanging around for the fest for the um, past game festival for the rest of this week. Popular face and still going. Top bloke side top bloke. Been around for a very long time. These high stakes stream games himself. Change the graphic here to Taffy. I feel like putting Taffy and Yeah, they do that, do that. Yeah. 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 I like that game in there, they're good, I like coffee. Yeah. 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 Recognise that Tap was going to show up with King Six that time. You know, with these two, you know, they, you, know you, 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 you do it one week, but you get it back the next week. Pardon? Yeah, yeah. It's been a while since it's been a really big part. Yeah, it's got the funniest tattoos. One more action to see. Just over an hour left tonight. Yeah, yeah. so six. Well, not six, he's got, got a diamond It's been fun. Something tells me there's some more to go. And looking like we've got some multi-way action, but... The old 60s the girl. Squeak has gone up at nine. Facing 175 seems good, 200. Talking of squeeze, and it's really warming out. I've got squeeze and stuff here. And then a girl with a kind of latex with a high heel boots. With a back to, you know. Yeah, nice size for the morning. I'll try to make it 150. It's just so, they're just so. Nobody seems to be folding yet, though. You know, you're just like, you know. Oh, yeah. I'm a small guy with seven six off, which is interesting. And we go, we can win five weeks. And would you believe it? We've got a 750 pound pot, and no one's got a heart of card higher than a nine. And look at this, someone must have flopped something huge here. We've got, we've got straight, I swear to me, it's not straight. We've got top set, we've got top pair and a straight draw. We've got middle pair and a straight draw. Everybody's got a straight draw or top pair. Everybody's got a straight draw or top set. Same, really. I just did it here. This going go really. This definitely qualifies for the action hand of the stream. Eight. Eight. Really? Yeah. You're going to say spikes in that, aren't you? Okay, so we've still got a set. Set still looking like the best hand. And, and look at this. Leave. Okay, this is definitely highlight reel worthy. What is going on here at the 5, 10, 25? 800 into 2k. 
What? He did not. Oh, I thought oh, he right, folded. Yeah, that looked like John Paul's card. I think he chucked a black in it. It looked like cards. James, this is crazy. What, 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 what are we witnessing right now? This is incredible scenes here. The hands. What a crazy hands. I think they like, make the, the nook nook. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm just, I'm just gonna let you know, Taffy. You're currently behind. Taffy's been some good pucks tonight. Something's telling me you've got to have quite a few eight hundred pounds to probably make this call with eight hundred. I called the people and hands to one side. Except you don't pass to one side. This is just like super, super tilting for, for John. I mean, Kevin probably just gonna find the call. Yeah, just find the call. I mean, Grace, he's Seven gonna push. Well, he's yeah. gonna push John out with everything and like. Seven tanks. Pretty time. tough to get called if you raised by Ian. Length of the bits. Headed hands here. I can't translate. I am very disappointed with that river card. <laughs> Cleared the lot. Michael Lampert, he's like, yeah, I've just seen Ben mention the pasta, did you see Spice Chicken pasta? Correct. He keeps Spice Chicken pasta. No, I can pass it to you, Sean. One of you, Sean. Just my 700, you've chopped up. Hey. Incredible. That was a very interesting what a huge part it was an interesting panel. I should have waited for me. I went for a quick wave. We're screaming for an eight there, Charlie. Who's that? It's nice and gentleman. Well played. Lucy, you're off my Christmas list. Oh, the fact is coming out now. I think I should. I don't know if I get rid of you, I should, I should shove it all in on this. It's just such a wet board that that's the problem. Hey? There's too many players for me to there's too many players for me to drill that board. <laughs> Two sevens. 
How was the uh, trip down from uh, sunny Liverpool then, Charlie? Direct, <laughs> direct train. Direct train, yeah. Got a change. Lift home tomorrow. Love and life. <laughs> well, let's not think about tomorrow. Let's think about tonight. We're in the action pack. DTD. Last game, best on. Fantastic time to be in that again. Usually always is. There's so much volume in there for seven. But you let's not think about tomorrow. Let's not think about it. Right? <laughs> Everyone else got themselves to dusty go on. The cash game festival. There you go. The cash game. <laughs> on Sunday, two cup prizes. Two cup prizes. But it's tomorrow, never come. Oh, Several streets of value. Lots of bad turn cards here as well. And now 10 8 gets there. That was 10 8 around. And um, we're going to see John at a game. He likes for the 80% pot size. And Andy's a non believer still. No. And we've got a clear yeah, check. Clear. check I thought you had Yeah, I mean, you've got to say well played to John to get two streets of value from the hand there. Oh, that's, case. that's a show too, right? I think John Trapp. Not that bad. He tries to stay No, John. I've known John for years, to be fair, John. John W. Mike Leonard said DTD is honestly one of the sickest places to play poker. Came up, he stayed at the village and it was boss. Yep, stayed at the village before. Not bad. DTD, one of the sickest places to play poker. Very right, sir. Uh, the UK's biggest and best card room in my eyes. Mm, Offer some of the biggest guaranteed tournaments. Players always come to Dustal Door, Nottingham, around the world, up and down the country, around Europe, everywhere. What a place to be. And uh, Mike Leonard had a very fortunate interview. We went for breakfast at the spoons and it drove in here. This was just before COVID. And the car hits, another car hits. So me and Mike Leonard was in a very fun. All those years ago now, two COVID's Getting some streams, getting everything going up, going again, getting some good events in, UK PC series, this cash game week, and obviously the competing time for the products. I mean, over the next month. Right, so we've got some decent hands going on here. We're thinking of a board again. 7, 8, 9. One diamond, two spades. Not quite rewarding this time. King Jack three. Everybody with a whole host of nothing. Nobody with a heart, but have they? I think I have a heart. You've got a big heart here today. Love it. Here we go. If you ever wondered about which man can find heart, John definitely wanted to decide to bet out with this good shot straight from us. And get the job done. Definitely 
Won a high roll, chopped a high roll, and then final table the high roll. In the last four high rolls, I believe that is what has happened. Very good. Not sure. Um, the biggest stats of the court in with was 5k at the beginning. I do believe it's a 1k to 5k, so I think pay minimum 5k maximum. Ace 10 off the low jack and mark. Seems like a good hand. I don't know if you've got a good hand. Yeah. It's Andy one of the 10 with the 7 and 5 off. Okay. Not from these nets, only play the good stone men. That's the best way to put it, Mike. Ah, Christ. Yeah, that wasn't a good day, was it? It's just one of Commentators are Mike, Mike, so way too quiet. David, thanks for the feedback. I have not long got here, so I don't know how to adjust this. Do you know how to adjust the, the, the volume of the mic? Just being getting close. Yeah. yeah, sorry guys, maybe I just need to get a little bit closer. I thought, I apologise, Ben. Apologise, Dave. Probably leaning back in my chair too much. It's not like a standing mic rather than like a mic that's on our. Um... <laughs> yeah, it's probably too bad as well. Very good. <laughs> good fun. You might need to borrow some of the Charlie Reed lungs, you know? Get that air out. Maybe I just need to People are watching it. Yeah. 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 Still got some time left. And right now there's some pretty way action. Green for the King Jackson and eight nine. Eight nine is open the button. Seems like a very slang area for him. There's a lot of juices about here, and yeah. Tom chooses to check this. Seems okay when you I think um, if we were uh, heads up here, man. So. 
and John Whittens. John Whitten wins with a bet return. Maybe we can figure this out for the next stream that we need to get these mics up a bit. So, although Ben says it might be a blessing, but we, are, uh, we can have a look at this for next time for you guys. John Ladin is another one, has picked up Kings. Important to note, guys, as well, that this is still a work in progress. The cast, the cast game series is on episode one. Just still going, working very, very hard to improve the stream for you guys. You've ordered new seats for the feature table, new tables, do some work on the microphone and stuff. Oh, look at this, we've been calling for it, and there's Kings versus Aces. And Kings? Kings? Queen. Wow, Kings! This is incredible. We could be seeing a huge pot here, with not long left to go in the stream. Talking about highlight reels, look at this. Here we go, here we go. This is, this is Kevin, bring it in the four bet with Queens. And the worst thing is, John Legge feels like something's up. John ships in 4K, and it's going to get back to Andy. He's placed the quick call already. Is Kevin, is Kev Brown here capable of folding his queens? Once he sees that it's gone, is it four better 4K, call the 4K. Can Kevin find it? I tell you what, Kevin's good enough to at least put stack for that. He's not just going to go bang. Can't imagine that. Just a point. Can you imagine that he at least had to? Kevin's good enough to recognise that this one, he can play. Kevin's good, a good enough player here to recognise that he's probably going to be an old player. Huh? Um, two, three, four, counting five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, <laughs> thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, two thousand. <laughs> face says it all. Face says it all. Does not like it. Kev's experience in it to realise now, yeah, for sure. I think he might get away from this. Yeah, our very best Ace King. We're up against two players now. You've got to, you've got to think maybe. You know, someone else might have queens, potentially kings or aces. Like, does it go like, could this be legitimately like ace, king and jacks? Maybe. Very unlikely. Especially with John Legman. Like, John Legman is not going to get out of the world. Yeah, this looks like Kevin's got the pass of a man who's going to get away from this situation. Best 824 better. He doesn't like it. He doesn't. He's on stream. He doesn't want to feel like it's making a difference. Yeah, Kevin has managed to get away. Did he fold, yeah? Kevin's managed to get away. I don't really know what's happened. Tough. You must have got aces. Yeah, you mid-raise and then, yeah. Very good raise, yeah. Twice, yeah, maybe one raise. Turn his hand up. Is this hand going to fold? Wait. Yeah, he's folded his hand. And here we go, get your seat belts on. 9.1k part aces versus kings. They chose to run it once, did we hear the conversation? You didn't quite hear that. But this is the cooler the whole stream has been waiting for. Aces versus kings, best of luck to both players. 
It doesn't get sicker than this. Ten. <laughs> the Queen's it did. <laughs> Looks like we are running it twice. Oh, for John. oh, it's opportunities. Any heart about? Ah, oh, oh, just wins it, doesn't he? No, it's the second round. Oh my god, he made it. Uh, Ted would have made quads on the second yeah. round. <laughs> that is sick, that's wonderful. I'm going to get a shot out of that one. That's a huge 9,145, 525, Aces versus Kings. The sickest of coolers. And Taffy scooping in the biggest pot of the night. Well, um, they would have run it twice. Uh, have to make this close. Yeah. And you have to feel for John there. It's pretty difficult to get away from that one. Here on impossible. And Sickest of pre flop coolers here at Dust Till Dawn. Uh, Taffy, can you stack your chips up, please? Yeah, we were just discussing that there, actually. We're not sure. Like, some places can have it. Maybe I don't know. I think what it is, I think all players just have all players have to agree in the park to the next multiple times. But I think it is only once or twice. A little bit of a loose open here for me and in the low jack with King Nine off. Gonna be faced by a three bet from Tom. Yeah, I really like the sizes that Tom's elected to use tonight. Tom went into the call as well. That's just off in the small blind. Yeah, I'm not too sure on this. I think John, John's got a fold in the small blind here, but does it does decide to get involved with the ace jack? A little bit off old. Quite deep, right? Ian Flop and Vest. Yeah, I like the check back from Tom Freeway here. Just too much going on. Not enough of the board. Oh, yeah, I actually really like this lead from John here, you know, blocking both of the flush draws. It's just when it's a, you know, a three bet part and he just flats. I mean, Cole calls the three bet. John's so. definitely capable of having some of the strong hands on this board from the small blind. And again, it's the timing because he's got the ace of diamonds and he's going to blast it again, so I think. Or Ian again with two pair, and that's a well timed give up from John. Yeah. Chat raise would have been pretty sick on this board, to be fair. Yeah. Would have been a very good chat raise. Kind of I really like this check from John, whether, whether the intention was to check raise or just giving up. Really, really well timed check here. We've seen John blast in a couple of spots before that may not have been the correct spot, but this time you can see Ian definitely would have been looking up with the King Nine. Very rare you see people river, river two pairs in live poker and try and find reasons to fold. Thank you. Thank you. Come back. Yeah, the check that was interesting. I think you can do that for that. What he gets. I think John Wetton is very careful. Green, as the ace of diamonds. 
It's been an interesting chase. Six four shooter from the low jack. Seems pretty close. Playing seven has it. Really. Hijack is this one, so Sanders low jack right first one. Yeah. Yeah, get behind the pole. It'll be the very loose open. Mark opens the cut off the Queen six suited, this is fine. John was wanting to get involved in the big line. And Ian comes along as well. So we're going to be going three ways to the flop here. Mark, John, and Ian. Yeah, yeah. Massively overplayed the flush. Yeah. I mean, multi way hands here. It's really hard to like. I think Mark may have missed the C bet here on this board. There's lots of good turn cards. You Continue battling on five or six and nine a club. Yeah, this club is great. Uh, it should be there. And now with nothing more to do really than and call. Right Everyone on the stream wants to see the nine of clubs. That's a nation river. Yeah, after, after, after Mark decides to check back the flop, I'd like to have seen Ian check this card. Pretty tough to work out which which worst hands are going to be calling. Time, what time are they playing to? Do you know? Um, they're playing till 12... 12.08, but we have, we're on a half an hour delay, so 12.38. How have uh, you guys enjoyed the stream in the chat? Have you, any of your favourites? Anybody that stands out to you as being your favourite player tonight? Anybody that's really intrigued you or really interested you? So uh, let's hear it from you. I'd love to see some reaction in the chat. How many of you come into like the uh, events that are going to be coming up? KPC, WPT 500. Anybody expected to be here for this Test Game Weekend this week? Yeah, yeah, we could be seeing some action here because we've got a few playable hands again. Sixes, seven, eight suited, ace, queen suited. And we're going to be seeing some three way action. Come on, Ian, you ain't going to win any if you can't. All seems pretty standard to me. I'll have ace, queen of diamonds. Yeah, I think I'll take ace, queen of diamonds. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's my, that would be my choice. Oh, can I take the six? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, there's some back doors for both, both players that they have. Something's telling, me, something's telling me that John could get himself into a lot of trouble here. See, um, see five of diamonds on the turn. It's a cheap card, right? <laughs> Ace, ace of spades. Great. Mm. Seven eight for the turn, they straight through. What's this now? Andy just leads the turn. Just a fold this is now, right? Yeah, again, it's it's whether John believes Andy's gonna lead the turn with strong hands here or not. Kind of irrelevant. We've got ace queen of diamonds, no back doors in sight anymore. I think, I think uh, you completely get behind the fold here. Yeah, yeah I think Tapio like and each. Choose a bigger size on the turn, however. Price so much stuff in here. Top set. Second set on the turn. Top set. Oh. I'd like to have seen Andy check the turn again. 
<laughs> That's a good throw. 50k on the table here, guys. Action pack 5, 10, 25. Have they all been struggling? Is it all been 25, yeah? 25 every hand. Most of the night's been 25. This is episode one of the Cash Game series in Dust Till Dawn. Definitely a work in progress with the streaming. Dust Till Dawn are rapidly working to improve the stream setup. And, yeah. Yeah, as Charlie was just saying there, Stuart, we're just being the first one. The poker for sure has been fun. Sorry. Provide the best sound quality for you today. Uh, hopefully, we can make the right adjustments. Oh. Make the right adjustments for you. There we go. John Legend betting the eighth. That's the second pair. It's got a good shot. And when it does have a straight, I'm surprised it's not just a straight straight. Unless it's going to. Find a check raising over there. He just wins here. Yeah, we're just going to Like John has to jump. What? Let's do more of this. John's got the type of guy to me. Put a flat in the hand. On the turn, but the fact that the hands that have can potentially have extra two on the turn. Open one ten under the gun with the Queen Jack off. Legend call here, John Legend call here. Ace Queen for Ian in the cutoff. Wow. 
large open this time to 100. And no customers. Yeah, huge for a 9% VP. Everybody's got a lot of VP. Yeah, it's really interesting to see about the, uh, the balance between everyone's VP today. Everybody's been equally involved in hands. Action for the table with VP like that, for sure. Eight in the low jack qualifies. A whole host of hands that can get involved here. Ace King and Queen Jack of Hearts behind. I've noticed that Wetton's been calling, John Wetton's been calling a lot back to do that hand, so I imagine he's going to come along with this Queen Jack of Hearts. Paul calling the three bets, and I imagine Legwin's going to come along with his puff eight. And we're going to see a flop three ways. Nice chunky three bet size from Mark out of position here as well. Giving other players worse of a place to call. Good size of the market, really is. Gonna go four ways here though. Ian's fancy a bit of the Jack Six suited. <laughs> Any action flop dealer? He's King Ten of Diamonds. Eight to the eight to the board. Ian looks like he's standing with a six. 1.5k in the pot. Next for the 800 bet. This is spontaneous to say the least. Like you've got to, you've got to be a little bit more careful for ways here. Ian. Mark's just got his thing high. And I can assure you that John will be going nowhere to this bet. Pretty sure we're going to see the just call. Dynamic board, you can change a lot. Four, a seven, a deuce, a club. Lots of other cards in the deck. Not many cards John's going to like here other than an eight on the turn. Probably a just call spot, what do you think, James? It's trouble. It looks like he's going to follow this. He should just go. I mean, I can get behind folding because, like I say, there's so many bad turn cards here. Like, in what t in what turn is John going to be happy? Maybe this just works. I said pass. Yeah, I can get behind the fold there. You can make that movement there, like scratch of the head, up your face. Yeah, I can completely understand the fault from John there. Like I say, it's just such a dynamic board that can change so much. And Ian's betting into, into four players. Never expecting to do it with a single six. I think it's a good fault. I don't think it's a great bet or a great lead by Ian. He probably doesn't know there whether he's value betting or blocking. However, he's put John Legg in a bit of a spot. Uh, Maybe has to talk to you. I don't know if I thought it's uh, versus Ian. When you call a free bet with Jack Six suited and it comes six high, you've got to like that. Get all the money in, lad. Go on. Limp with the King Gates off. And the nice hole with the Ace King. Yeah, one under one two five. One under one two five is good. One thing I will compliment about Tom today is his sizing has been pretty much excellent since since he sat at this table. 
clearly a very intelligent poker player. Joined in on the action with us late after Gary Spinks has bust out. Very unfortunate for Spinks today. I saw that actually, it was the deuces and the queens, right? Sixes and, um, sorry, yeah, deuces and the queens, yeah, set over set. That was the start of it. Turn spade. Yeah. Three spades on the turn. And then we do read when bet on, big bet on the turn of four. And decided to fall. You know these are raised on the turn. Queen's raised the turn. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's two raises on the turn. Interesting raise again, though. Yeah, I mean, it could have all been over then. If the board had appeared in the hand on the river, it would have been all, all over Spinks just there. But if that wasn't enough to rub it in, Ace, King, Big Sixes, flop, flop and best on both runouts. Both players agreed to run the board twice. And Spinks, it was un unfortunate. But he'll be back. He's had an absolutely brilliant last 12 months of poker. And he'll be back. So, talking about the last hand here, the Jack Six and Ian. Falling in love with the top pair. I imagine this is a very similar board that's going to fall in love with the king eight. Falling in love with the top pair. And it could lose a big bet. You should choose a big bet here. Yeah, again, Tom Alex with their 80% size. And. and it's a good player. A super big one. How's Ian? Ian gets away from the king. Got to get behind now. Playing super deep, I'm not too sure how often Tom gets to choose a large side in four ways here, but wait that time. I think I've got it. I think he'd just go for it. The players that win the pub. I might be wrong, but I think I've got it. I think it's just like that. People like to cut two with these days, so like a geometric size where people just like bet a side which is Way this. A lot of people are going to be. Come on, man. Yeah, nice chunk of size here from Kevin in the small blind. I like it. And now, Ian, after watching Ian, I'm expecting him to just call here. But it looks like he is taking the aggressive route, which is good. And a good size, actually, as well. So, well played so far from Ian. Now, Back on Kevin, playing super, super deep here. No reason to ever fold this hand. Looking to set mine. I'm not expecting to be getting too many hands that are just two overs. A lot of them are going to be crushing. Pocket eights. And on this board, Ian should be scooping the pot. To choose. I like I like a big size. So just chose big sides. Like. So I think I've just heard Tom Garment say. Might have been his last three hands, but he's still got 20 minutes left. I guess he was calling a time when the last three hands Yeah. Charlie, I love cards. Is this future? Yeah. I mean, me and Charlie do share something in common, clearly. <laughs> yes, yeah, Stuart, I'm sure it'll get better too. It's gonna, I'm sure it's gonna improve. It's gonna make for a right improvement. Sound looks like it's been great today. Well, it's just good to give you some live cash game action from Dustal Dawn Poker in Nottingham.
I still don't punk club in Nottingham really as a club that can provide anything it really wants, any size tournaments, any size tournaments, any size cash games. If you want spicy chicken pasta, you can get that as well. Make sure you get in points, Carlsey. Poker clubs during lockdown, everyone was trying really hard to get those till dawn back open. Very quickly get back open. And here we are, love and life. In this last uh, this last few hands, I don't know how many we have. I don't we have 20 minutes, I believe. But I did hear someone say last three hands. What's all the call 95 about? Who's made it 95? Who did make it 95? Somebody bet 95 line or something. Oh, we paid a hundred pound bumper. No, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a hijack number, so it looks like we have got the one hundred shot on to his hand. Yeah, John Wetton's chose to, to straddle. Tappen's in a very good spot here. Yeah, he's going to go on to the test. He should be just taking this one down. Nothing, nothing for anyone here. Looks like Tapp's taking it down with his big pair. Thank you very much, much appreciated. Nice. Nice. Healthy 12.6k for Andy, Mark's got 9, Kevin 8, Ian 7, Tom 6.3, John 4.2. We've got L4.2 and John W 2.6. Waiting for the action to restart again. A perfect time to remind you that this is the cash game week at Dust Till Dawn. 15,000 in cash prizes to give away. Every player that plays on a hold'em table, uh, sorry, every player that plays on a cash table in Dust Till Dawn will receive a ticket that you'll write your name on and yourself enter to the Tom Bowler on Sunday. And we're coming to the end. <laughs> I think that is the end, guys. Thank you very much for joining us for today's 5 10 25 No Limit Hold'em cash, cash game. This is me, Charlie Reed, with James Ablett. Thank Come you. Come and guys. join us at Dawn. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a pleasure for the last uh, last hour or so that I jumped in. So, yeah, thank you for me and Charlie. It's been great. It's been good fun. Take it easy, guys. Hope to see you this weekend. Bye for now.